Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Uh, Kurt, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Kurt Paul, and I, I've been writing about uh, urban culture for 40 years. Great. So today is March 1st, 2022, <laughs> and we're really happy to be here with BG183, a founding member of the TAPS crew, really legendary graffiti artist, a master of style, uh, and his kind of uh, the intricacy of his backgrounds and the details in his pieces uh, are just out of this world. Um, and BG will be talking a lot about growing up in the Bronx and his art, and we're excited to get into it. So um, BG, why don't you start off by talking about your family's history and background and um, say a little bit about how your family ended up in the Bronx. Okay, yeah. So, you know, uh, my mother, Maria, my father, Sotero, you know, um, they both met in Puerto Rico in a place called Santuce. Sure, sure. Santuce, Puerto Rico was basically a place that had like kind of like a hip hop element into in Puerto Rico, but was called Salsa. And in that particular area that my mom and father, you know, lived at in Santuce, they had a lot of a land, a lot of land club. That was, you know, like, you know, the one, like, one of the best, like, salsa um, performers, um, musicians, um, singers came from in that era in Santuce. And, and that was like the beginning of, you know, of my mom and pop. Um, my father was a professional baseball player in Puerto Rico. He played under a, a, the, the the baseball team Santuce and he played for two years and before that he also traveled you know he you know because my father was like a dark-skinned Puerto Rican um, so when they took him to like you know places like South Carolina he played in Georgia he played in different part of, of the South of America um, he was wondering why they kept, you know, um, putting him in, in black hotels. You know, he only allowed to eat in black restaurants. So, you know, he, he first time in his life, he was facing racism. Yeah. From, uh, you know, like being Puerto Rican in Puerto Rico, you know, if you're dark skin, you still could walk into like a, you know, like a typical like white, light skin you know, Puerto Rican, but over there, when he came down here to America, you know, he, he was treated different, you know, like they all rode in the same bus, but all the, all the white, light-skinned Puerto Rican, they, they, they took him to the, the white hotels, and then my father would go into the black hotel, and, you know, and that's how, how it was for him, you know, so after that, he, he went back, you know, went back to Puerto Rico, you know, um, my mom and him, you know, got together, and then my father decided to 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 go to New York City. So he moved to Harlem, like on uh, like a 106, 107 in Park Avenue. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. You know, today is like you know where they do the festivals at. So yeah. my father was there, like in the beginning. I think he moved there in 1957. Oh, he came okay. from Puerto Rico, so now he's in. He's in Harlem, and my mom is still back home. So I think after like three, four years later, my father asked her, you know, let's let's come to New York. So they moved to New York, and they moved into the Bronx, and I think it was like Bryan Avenue, Bryan Avenue where they lived at for a while. Then they moved again to like a you know a regular apartment building where I was born, and that was um. In Freeman Street, right off of the Sheridan, okay. you know, I was not too. I was like maybe a block away from the six train. Sure, yeah. You know, that was like you know, um, you know, we used to take the six train back then. Uh, my father worked as a, a factory worker, as a shipping clerk, okay. for many years, and my mom was basically you know, a housewife. You know, yeah, like yeah. taking care of my me, and my older two brothers and my sister. Yeah, and yeah. that was a time that you know, like, it was like early, you know, early '60s. I remember, and I remember you know, a lot of stories. You know, like you know, my 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 father used to play 
softball. Now he's like uh, a softball player playing here. You know, he will play like in Cortona Park, sure. Central Park, Pelham Bay Park, and and he used to play for they used to play for money. Yeah. You know, or for beer. You yeah. know, whoever wins to buy like a uh, like a couple packs of uh, of beer. You know, for the players. And then my father got into playing like dominoes. So he became sure. like a professional domino player Damn. back then. You know, he used to bring back trophies. I used to see wow. trophies. And I remember, I think I probably knocked one of them. And I remember breaking one and he was very upset. You know, I don't I don't remember him hitting me or anything like that, but I know he was very upset. And, and my father was very strong. He was a very strong man. Yeah. My mom... For for Christmas, she would buy me art supplies. Wow! And that was like the beginning of me, you know, drawing and I, and that helped because you know for for Christmas, for my birthday, you know, any type, you know, if I'm outside walking, well, she would see something with art related, and she would buy me, you know, coloring by colors, you know, like those pages, um, you know, coloring books. You know, anything that was art related, you yeah. know, we used to do. I remember mom used to buy like these 500 to 1,000 puzzles. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. We, we used to start like early in the day and finish it at night. You know, yeah. it was all four of us, you know, we'd be like, ding, ding, like putting all the puzzle together. <laughs> you got your you, puzzle crew. <laughs> like, you, you take care of the sky, you take care of all the, the, the tree area, you take care of the, like, the buildings or the water scene, whatever, the, you know, the actual puzzle was, you know, we, yeah. we entertain ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah. I would go outside and, and I would play, you know, the street games, you know, one sure. of the street games was, um. Like Scalcy's. Yeah, you yeah, know, that yeah. was one. Um, we used to play, um, it was called 13. And 13. that was, you, you throw it, you throw the ball against like a, like the edge of the, of the side of the building. And it will pop. It will go and you grab it. And then, or it might get stuck. They had like a little space of the building. Like if you throw it just right, the ball will get stuck yeah. there. Yeah. And that was considered like... 50 point to 100 point. Oh, okay, and we used okay. to play like to like like 180. So the more you did, but you always had to pass the number 13. Yeah. You know, like you couldn't go under. If you went under, you, that's when the next person. Uh, if I remember okay, the okay. story, I think that's how I go. And then, you yeah. know, we play like um, round up around the world. That's like a tag that you play. Sure. Uh, bulldog. You know, we played all different games and. And during that time, I remember, you know, we was mostly in like in a black neighborhood. Yeah. But again, I was kind of like dark skin, so I actually fit, fit in into the neighborhood. Yeah. And they used to say, you know, Puerto Rican against blacks. Yeah. You know, so it was like that. You know, we always lost because they were like much bigger than us and everything. <laughs> it was like kind of like skinny. But, you know, we had definitely had great time. You know, I don't remember anything crazy, you know, um... Then, when we was living in Freeman, yeah, the the building got you know that's when like the beginning of the burning of the South Bronx. Sure. So these buildings was getting burned or accidentally. Not all of everything yeah. was burned because they wanted to burn it. So you know, buildings too, right, right? You know, these was building that was there owned by landlords. Yeah, and you know they were you know they everybody was living there, but you know one. One building burned because maybe the Christmas tree. A lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of fire was caused by you know in the winter time with the, you know people plugging the heaters Heater, with yeah, the Christmas yeah. tree where you know with the washing machine or everything was in one outlet. Yeah, you know and the fire was like really in that time. I don't think they had any regulation how to plug in these stuff. Yeah. so all these fire was taking place, and next thing you know, I, I think the landlord couldn't really afford to fix these so and people was was not gonna move in places like that. I remember yeah. we always was always like the last family to move and there were like oh, okay, yeah. thirty <clears throat> family members that lived in one building. Yeah. You know, we was like maybe the second or the third to move. So I mean during that time there was no landlord. Yeah. So again my mom and pop was not really making money. Yeah. So we would stay in those, you know, you had still had light. Sure, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah. but it was no heat. 
Yeah. But at least, you know, you only have to do is like we, my mom would put on the stove or uh, and buy two or three more heaters because, yeah. again, we're not paying for no light bill because yeah, yeah. that building is like it's not on the record. So we lived like two or three years living like that. You know, we were comfortable. After sure. a while, it was like you had to move because it was, you know, it was getting more abandoned yeah. and it's not safe anymore. Is this like the early 70s? Yeah, this like about? early, early 70s. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. my mom moved again. We moved to to Simpson. Okay. You know, Simpson, right yeah, right yeah. across the street from Casita Maria. Sure. And that was like a recreational area that, you know, that I spent my time. Yeah. You know, playing sport or ping pong or handball. They also had a softball team there. And that, and that particular block was always active in like in activities because yeah. of Casita Maria, you know, we still had again the stick ball, we used to do all different games. So everybody every summer it was like just playing sport, you know, being active every day, doing that. Me and my brother was like one of the best at what we was doing, you know, we got into like playing Connect Four. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. became the champion of the block. <laughs> Even to this day people say, I play you Connect Four and <laughs> and I'm still nice at it. And, you know, this is how it was. And then again, you know, with the fires, you know, like I remember there was a building right across the street, you know, from where I live at and through the windows and through the current, I could see like light, a lot of light coming mm. through the currents. And then when I used to open the current, it was like one of the biggest fire wow. in the South Bronx, you know, like, you That's know, like crazy. when, you know, it had, it had, it was like a total of like five buildings, like a complex building that was connected together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, you could see the whole five building burning. Wow. And, and then after that, you know, that was like, you know, like, like kind of like my entertainment, yeah. You know, something that I, you know, I'm sleeping. I'm trying to sleep, and I see all this light, and I'm looking out the window. I see this fire. I hear people screaming, and I'm like, wow, this is kind of like, you know, you know, for me it was like, wow, it's like, you know, I'm young, so I was sure. like, this is crazy. Yeah. And then the next day in the news, you will hear that four firemen had died on that fire. Because, you know, like they probably was on the roof and they fell yeah. because of all that heat of the fire. So, you know, this was, you know, this is what you heard. You heard always the fire department truck always passing by. You yeah. hear the ambulance passing by. You hear the police going in and out. Of, you know, and I'm, and I'm still, <clears throat> you know, I'm still growing up. But at the same time, I, I'm doing the sports. Yeah. I'm enjoying, I'm doing some art in my school. Yeah. And... You know, I graduated from the fifth to the sixth, and Which now elementary school. Uh, I went to IS sixty six. That was on Jenny's. Okay. And then from Jenny's, I went to PS one sixteen. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's, no, PS is, is PS is sixty six, and PS IS IS, IS, IS one sixteen okay, was okay. a junior high school. Yeah. And that particular junior high school was. It just opened up. Oh, great. Okay. It was called Rafael Hernandez. Mm -hmm. He's a Puerto Rican musician. Sure. And and they had this school had everything. This school had um, wood shop, electrical shop, art and craft. It had um, sewing class. It had everything that, you know, like it was a school that was meant for. You know, like in in my type of neighborhood, you know, so called the ghetto, yeah. was a school that had all these high end stuff to teach, you know, young kids. You know, that's going to that school. So I went to that school when I was in the sixth grade, and I learned how to do wood shop, electrical. I learned how to do sewing. You know, wow. craft and art. And yeah. in the craft and art class, I learned how to do stencils. Whoa! Okay. And that was like one of my first time doing stencil like you know the, my teacher actually taught me how to use a razor blade you know put it on the light to make sure that you don't have like extra paper sticking out yeah and I again that during that time I was, I was a great artist so I created it like this parakeet bird you know when 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 he cut it and then when he sprayed it or I, I think he I think he was doing like silk screening or yeah. whatever he was doing 
he loved it. He said he he showed the class. Look at the student. And I was kind of like shy back back then. You yeah, know, I was yeah. like, okay, and and you know, I remember doing that. And then I remember one story in the third grade. I think this is like one of my stories that I always mention is um you know I I drew a Spider Man. Yeah. You know, I just did like the overhead and the eyes yeah. of Spider Man. And I remember I looked at it, I, I had it on top of my table, and I think it was like um, homeroom, like, you know, you could talk for like 10, 15 minutes before class would start again. And I remember this one guy, one of the students came up to me and said, oh, can I see that drawing you did? It looks, it looks very nice. Yeah. And he took it, and he brought it to a group of students that was like talking about it. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing them, like, you know, like, you know, they're saying some stuff. And then the guy come back and he says, my friend is better than you. Huh. And he gives me back my Spider-Man. Huh? I said, what? So that made me go back home to practice. <laughs> so that was like the beginning of you know me getting into it. So I went and I drew the same Spider-Man head, but this time I did like the web. Okay, like yeah, the web yeah, yeah, that yeah. comes for the Spider-Man head. I said, well, I'm gonna show these guys, you know. So yeah. now I got, you know, I'm waiting for them. So he comes over, can I take it? I said, yeah, I take it. Then he comes back, he said, ah, the other guy drew Incredible Hawk. He's better than you. Oh, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. so, so, you know, so, again, because the life of the Bronx is like that. It's always a competition. Sure, you know, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. better than you. Um, look at your sneakers. Your sneakers, you know, they got holes in it, you yeah. know. Or your sneakers look dirty. I got the brand new sneakers. So, you know, the fashion part of the Bronx, you know, and I was next to... Jew man, you know, they had a mm. store called Jew man, it was called Hosiery, and that was like around the corner. And they, the one who actually started the fashion of hip hop, because all the clothes was made by Jew man, like you know, you yeah. would buy, you know, before Dr. J, before yeah. the Jimmy Jazz, before all these stores, they say this is a hip hop store, mm. you know, Jew man was like the, one of the first, so. We had one on a one sixty third, and they're still there. Sure. Uh, the the son, still there. His name is Chucky. You know, we know him for many, like I know him since the seventies. And then you had like two more stores that was like on around the corner on Southern Boulevard on Simpson train station. Yeah. And then you had on on another one on Freeman Street. Wow. But you know, so we had like, you know, like really like, no more than like a thousand feet. 1500 feet away from all these stores that you bought like the when you bought your first Nike sneakers was you go there, huh? you go there. Yeah. and I remember going into going into these stores and you know you be like oh let me get a those pair these are the new Nikes I said Nike and they were like they, they were called Cortez they was like like riveted bottom, sure, like yeah. with a like like almost like a tennis sneaker, like blue, like a blue family, and I said, oh, they look nice. Can I buy one? Yeah. And they'd be like, okay. So they will show you this brand new Nike. You're like, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. And then they will put it in the box, and and I say to him, oh, can I see the other one? They say, ah, why? Why you want to see the other one? Why? And I say, oh, I wanna. <laughs> I want to see how they look, <laughs> and he'll he will be like they'll be like no, and then when they put it out, it's an old pair of Nike. The uh, le- uh, so uh, the uh, left or the right will be old, and be like I don't want it. And then if you know they're saying get out, get out, you don't want to buy. It. Oh and it was only God. fifteen dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. for a pair of Nikes. You wow. know this is the beginning of sneakers. You know sure yeah. And then you know, the same way when you bought Adidas, you know Adidas came out before. Uh, Nikes and you had the Pumas, yeah. you know, and then you, Converse, the Pumas, and you had the uh, the Pro Cast. You had the 69ers. Yeah, the 69ers yeah, was, like, 69ers was like these were like a line, and then before that was the Converse, and then before the Converse was the Skippies. Yeah, yeah. The Skippy was like one of the first, you know, like I made sure that that I had a hole in my Skippy because I didn't want to wear Skippy. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm it snap on you. Yeah, yeah, it would snap on you. And your toes be on the bottom like this looking or they would flap up, you know, so. And it was because the heat of the summer used to like burn the rubber off, you know, yeah. so. It was really hard time. So, you know, again, so we had the Jew man, you know, 
showing like giving out the hip hop clothes. You know, they 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 had the sheepskins, they had sure. the leather the leather jacket, the bombers. You know, I used to rock all that. You know, that Chinese mock neck, the yeah. uh, overlap jeans. They had um, they had like um, French cut pants. You yeah, know, yeah. everything that was. The fashion, you know, you went through them. And this was, this was... When like, this was like 70, high, it was 73, 72, yeah, yeah, yeah. 74. Yeah, sure, sure, very You know, early, this is like right very there. early, you know, like, again, you know, because I was always outside, so, yeah. you know, I had to, you know, and it's funny, I was not trying to express, you know, like, to show up in front of the girls. It was sure. mostly to show up in front of my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, you know, the day the one, you know, like, I would go to that group, and automatically, you know, they would they would try to like snap, you know, make jokes sure, on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So in the beginning, I felt kind of like, oh, why are they doing that? And then after a while, I became the guy. Yeah, that, you know, you come up to me, but I see something I didn't like. You know, I would like, you know, snapping. yeah, I'd be like, look <laughs> at your glasses, or look at your jeans, look at your pants. You yeah. know, you uh, know, next thing you know, they want to fight me. You know, and you know, we start fighting. But that's how it was. You know, like growing up. You know, it's like. You know the fashion. You know, uh, you know, I, I, same thing playing sports. You know, I'm better yeah. than you. I, I, I hit more home runs than you. Yeah, yeah. I got a better swing. I could catch better. You know, and when we play two hand touch, you know, I could do more moves than you. I could yeah. catch. I could run faster. So yeah. everything was always a competition. Yeah. You know, so like. Let me ask you. Uh, a lot of artists talked about. The gang activity too. So you, you, you run into gang members, they got colors on. You know, how, how did you navigate that scene? You see their graffiti up on different walls, right. things like that. And um, did you for, that? for me, like doing like the time with the gang members, you know, they lived on my block. Sure, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So, you know, it was not like I was scared of them or anything. Sure. So I was already part of that group. But not running with them, but yeah. I was neutral with them. Sure. Which, so, which, uh, you know, which we had we had the Savage Skulls. Savage Skulls. You yeah, had yeah, the yeah. Chingalings. Oh, Chingalings. Yeah, Savage yeah. Nomad. Yeah. And you had the Boogie Brothers. You know, um, and then you had uh, other crew that was in gang member. There sure. was like regular crews. You know, yeah. you had the like Kelly Crew. Like in my neighborhood, you had Kelly Crew, Wilkins Crew. Yeah. You had um, the Gestapo Crew. Oh, you had sure. the Zulu Nation. You had you know. All these crews that was up, we got boogie. You had the the Bamboo Brothers, and that was like um, with Theodore and them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They used to yeah. jam a place called Seventy Five Park in mm. the early '70s. You know that's a you know I you know I I saw him perform, but I didn't know he was grand with the Theodore. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And and a true story is um, you know again I had a friend of mine that that when I went to his house. And he's he's talking to his mom, and he's saying to his mom, "Mom, where's my gun at?" Now, like, hmm. you, I can't even tell my mom where my <laughs> or, or where my slingshot or my or my pea shooter. You she know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she <laughs> whacked me. And this guy's saying, "Mom, where's my gun at?" I thought he was joking, and I yeah. hear his mom say, "Yeah, it's right here in the kitchen drawer." Yeah. I said, "Wait mom. a minute." Okay, you sure? Which one is it? Eh, it's a small, it's a small twenty-two. Then, and I like, oh shit! I like, what the? and my mom like, you know, what's going on here? So next thing you know, he asked for another gun. His mom said, yeah, I have it right here. I like, oh. And then, and he says, your mom, can you bring it over? Now I say, maybe this guy's lying. So his mom really brings it over, gives it to him, and he's like, okay, mom, thank you. And he gives it back to her. And I said, wow. And then this guy, like, was one of the guys that, you know, like, when people heard his name, they yeah. ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, he was my friend. Sure, yeah, yeah, And yeah. so I remember we walked over to what, uh, where Grand Wizard Theater was performing. And he's walking around with a shotgun. And, oh. and then, you know, we got to the to the area where they were DJing at. You know, when you DJ, there's always, like, people surrounding sure. to, you know. And he tells me, yo, can you do, you know, I want you to do is grab the shotgun, put it on the side, and walk around. And I say to myself, like, you know, like, why, you know. But next thing you know, I grabbed the shotgun, and I walked around. Yeah. I did it. I did it. 
But then I went like this, and I tried to, I tried to get back to him. He's like, no, no, no. I'll walk around a second time. And I said, okay. I walked around a second time. And then after that, you know, I see, you know, Grand Wizard Theodore, he's performing, he's DJing, yeah, yeah. you know, he got his crew. Because, you know, back then, if we didn't do stuff like that, you got robbed Absolutely. for your, your equipment. equipment. Yeah. Your equipment. A lot of DJs got robbed for their equipment because, it, one, there was no money in the street. Sure, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And the way you probably got, you robbed somebody for their DJ equipment or you will break into the store. Sure, yeah, Like yeah, any yeah. electrical store that sold mixes and, and turntables, you will go in there. Anyway, yeah. You know, at that t time it was expensive. Or, or speakers. Yeah. So, you know, so at that time, you know, you know, that was like that. So, you know, I started DJing because he okay. had DJ equipment in his sure. house. Sure. So, you know, boom, I'm DJing, you know. Uh, I met a lot of a lot of people during that time. There was um a DJ with kid. They had like a, a couple group there that was performing back then. Breakers? You know, the breakers was, you know, later on in like in the eighties, you yeah. know, but they was before Breaker, they were called Beat Boy. Sure. And the Beat Boys, you know, they had their own, almost like an up rock. Yeah. They used to do up rock first. Yeah, yeah. Before Break thing, they was like more up rock. And like, you know, they would dance together. Sure. And they would drop and, you know, and, you know, and do almost like a routine. And that was the first time I got to see that, you know, like, in know. And that time, I, again, I was not really dancing or yeah, doing yeah, anything yeah. like that. But, you know, then later on, you know, again, um, I'm seeing, like, and I'm and I even into graffiti yet. You know, sure. right now I'm more into, like, the, the DJing, you know, and then um, you had the, the, the song Rapper's Delight came out. Sure, sure, sure. But Absolutely. when Rapper's Delight came out, like, I'm in the mix, so you'll you be the first one to hear it. Yeah. Before it even went on the radio. Oh, so it went, okay. it went on the radio a year later. Okay, okay. It got sure, on the sure. radio. So, so you, what happens when you, you hear, hear too much music? Would you hear it in the park jam or you just Right, you hear it in the park jam or oh. you or you buy the buy the records. Oh, you yeah, buy the records. Yeah, right, yeah, you yeah, buy the yeah, record yeah. because you know, it's a, it's the beginning and everybody's like, Oh look at Rapper's Delight and you know yeah. already the the DJs and the MCs and everybody performing, you know. Yeah. You're hearing the Grandmaster Flash perform, you're hearing uh, a lot of DJ performing, and you hearing all these um, cool Herc and the Herculoids performing. Sure, sure, you know what I'm sure. saying? So all that you hearing from mixtape, and people coming oh, over oh. with mixtape and and, and yeah, giving you mixtape, yeah. and you hearing all this, and that's how. And then you had in the early, you had Mr. Magic. Mr. Magic. Yeah. You know, and then before that there was somebody else, but there was like underground college ones, mm. and then they had Mr. Magic that came on about like 11 o'clock and uh, p.m. or and then he moved over to 12 then he moved over to 1 p.m. Yeah. but we used to find my brother was one of the guys that went on a mission to record all these wow. hip-hop so so my brother was into the music so I got into the That's music with my brother yeah. so again you know you had the DJs he had the jams going on yeah, like yeah, again yeah. I'm in the South Bronx so you, you all those performance you know so, you yeah. see yeah you see for free you yeah. know what i'm saying like oh, yeah, so for, for sure. free and then you had you know the records you had people dropping records and i remember like i was saying earlier about rapper's delight it, it, it came out and a year later it, it became in the radio and then two years later it was one of the hottest songs <laughs> and i'm tired of listening to rapper's delight <laughs> Yeah, but you then, then you hear people yeah. sing, yo, you heard this song, Rappers Delight. I say, yo, that's old. That's not old. I just heard it in the radio. This is, this is brand new. We're like, no, that's, that's old. That's yeah, old. Yeah. That's old. Because, you know, when you're in the mix of the, of the you know, of the culture of hip hop, sure. you know, you hear it way before it became mainstream. And, Absolutely. And you knew, you know, so I was one of those guys that was, you know, fortunate that, that I saw all that stuff. Yeah. And then my older brother, you know, he got into into gangs. Sure. So yeah, now yeah. he's part of the the Savage Schools. Oh, he's part of the Savage Schools. So okay. now yeah, yeah, yeah. there was um in the I think early late seventies, like seventy eight, or uh, I don't know how how early they started. 
Um, you had a guy named Comanche. Oh, Comanche, I've heard of Comanche. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Blackie. And Blackie they, they too, were yeah. all. There was like the the presidents and uh, the one who ran the service goals. They started um, a Puerto Rican. Uh, what's the name? Puerto Rican Coalition Security. Oh, oh, the black the black schools had something. Or right. The, then, the, the black spades had something. So similar. the yeah, black yeah, had yeah. the black coalition, and yeah. then you had the Spanish coalition. Sure, and they sure. both had security um, license to to get contract for when all these buildings was all abandoned. Yeah. They went in and they're trying to make them all brand new, sure. renovate all these old buildings, you know, so... So the Spanish had mostly all the South Bronx area because it was all dominated by Spanish people. And then, sure, sure. And then you had like the Black Coalition, they were own like, you know, they would run like Harlem and some part of the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. But I remember that, I don't know who was stepping on whose territory, you know, we had to go to war. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, So yeah. now I'm working with that company was called, you know, it was a security company. Sure. So uh, I'm in like, I think it was like 79, 80. I'm working with them. They they used to pay like $30 for a, every eight hours. And that yeah. was pretty good money. Yeah. $30 during that time. And and I'm working with them on the weekend. So I would do like a 16-hour shift. I would do eight hours on a Saturday and eight hours on a Sunday. Yeah. And you know, I got to meet every gang member. So every, because every gang member was, you know, was allowed any any type. You know, it could sure. have been Che Guevara, could have been Savage Snowman, Savage sure. Cold. Doesn't really matter. You would go and work because you know a lot of these guys, you know, they was probably uneducated or came out of jail, can't get a regular job. So yeah, they would yeah, go yeah. there and get paid. So you know, I got to meet um, Fish. He was like the president. Of the Savage No Man, okay, yeah, Vice yeah. President, got to meet him, and we, we was like, honestly, like really hanging out almost every time I go to work. You know, that was like my my friend. So yeah. I got to meet a guy called Machine Gun Eddie. Okay, so okay. now you know, now I'm with the gang member, but I'm all you know. Also at the same time, I'm dressing you know still hip hop. You know, sure. I got my my hip hop gear on. I will go work, and and that's how it was. You know, like. It was like, for me, I never really saw, you know, there was violence going on. Sure. You know, like when I, the, 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 the violence was when you go to the clubs. Yeah. When you go, when you go clubbing, always in the ending of the club, there was always somebody or two or three people getting beat down. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. why you looked at my girl. Yeah. Why you stepped on my sneakers. Something like that, You know, yeah. why you looking at me funny. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. it. Yeah. You know, you couldn't look, you know, like back then, you would walk, you never gave, you know, eye contact, contact yeah, yeah, yeah. because, you know, the person would look, yo, would you, would you know, you what me? the fuck you yeah. looking at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Do you sure. have problems? What's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're like, I'm just looking. <laughs> you know, what's up? You know, like, what's up? And then, what's up? And then you say, what's up? And then you go like this, and then yeah, yeah. the other guy go like that, and you know, yeah. who, who's, who really has something? Yeah. You know, you have or I have, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how it was, you know? So, yeah. so, so for my crew, you know, I had Simpson crew, um, you know, we was always together, so we always go as a group. And we leave as a group. Sure, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Again, we was not looking for no girls. We was only, sure. you know, we went for the music of the hip hop. Whoever was yeah. DJing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and see who was wearing what, and then at the same time, who was gonna get robbed that night. Yeah. So that yeah, was like, yeah. you know, we'd be in the corner like this looking, and this guy's getting robbed. This girl getting a hair pulled by another girl. They, this guys are fighting. This guy came through like this. And now he's running, scared, like, you know, I thought he was tough, and he wasn't, you know, and, and that was, you know, every weekend was like that, every yeah, Friday yeah. and Saturday. So did you, did the hip-hop flyers come across your desk, and did, yeah, yeah. did the artist, since you was always inclined to art, you, I imagine you must have looked at the art, because Phase 2 and some of the other early writers were doing the flyers. Right. So, you know, you and your brother were in the music, so anybody approached you about 
Applying your art to... No, we did. We did flyers like in the early 80s. We did flyers. I think Bio did flyers. Yeah. I did flyers. I helped them out do flyers. But again, it was like we did it and not thinking like, you know, exactly. hey, like, you know, like that. I probably saw a lot of Phase 2 fly, but I looked at them, you know. Anytime they give you, you, you throw, throw it out. out. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. what it's at. And you throw it out, you know, you're not yeah. thinking that anything was worth anything. Sure, yeah. But and then, and then, you know, during that time, again, I'm still broke. Like, before I even started working security with, with these guys, you know, I needed to make money. Yeah. So, you know, again, I was a good artist, and I used to go to these shows. I used to go to one to this to this um, party they used to have every weekend. I used to go there, and they always used to, used to stamp you. Mm. And that's how you pay $2. They stamp you, you yeah. go in, and then one day, you know, I think I didn't wash my hand really good. I went back and I went like this and I got in for free. Okay. I said, oh shit, I got in for free. But they were using the same stamp from the next day. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then and then I said to myself, man, you know, it took me like a couple of weeks. I said, maybe I could draw it. <laughs> so I used, oh. ask, I used to ask somebody to come over. Let me see your stamp. Oh, stay right there. And I used to draw it exactly alike. To so replicate it, boom. Okay, thank you. Oh, you, oh what do you want to look on my side? Thank you. And then then I went like this, and I got in for free again. Said, oh, shit. And then after a while, my boys, I say, oh, how you got in? I said, ah, oh, you drew it. Yeah. Oh, can you draw mine? So yeah. I, 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 drew, I drew all my boys. Yeah. But we had a way. You can't go in too early. Sure. You had to go in when it almost packed. They don't know who's in and out. And sometimes they, yeah. they change, you know, like they change the person at the door. Yeah. So, you know, you go like this. I was here earlier because you allowed back then, you was allowed to go in yeah. and come out. Although you had a stamp, you could go in and out like yeah. in case you want to go to the store. So and then I say, yo, maybe uh, I, I, I could start charging people. Yeah. So and then the jam was like $3. I would charge a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Give me a dollar. So I made my dollar, you know, now I'm making $20, I got $20 in my pocket to 20 people, and then, then the jam was like $5, I used to charge $3, yeah. you know, yeah. oh, I don't have $3, so you're not going in, so yeah. pay, pay $5, yeah. and then and then the people used to get tough on me, like, how you know, you, you, yo, I'll give you the $3, if I don't get in, I'm going to come back. I said, you're going to get in, you know, just relax, walk in like nothing happened, or make it seem like, you know, you got a fake. You know, and then they used to walk in, walk out, and that's how I made my money wow, during that yeah, time, yeah, you know, yeah. like with my art game. And so growing up, you know, again, well, it was high like, school you went to. and then after that, I went to James Monroe High School. James Monroe High School, for you know, sure. it's yeah, like yeah. one of those high schools that was so bad wow. that it was the, the reputation was no good. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah. me, it was like my district school. Yeah, sure. So when I, when I went there, who I saw? Everybody from, from my block. neighborhood, yeah. you know, so my brother's there. I remember my first time being at the, at James Monroe High School, you know, they give you like a ticket to get your lunch. Yeah. So I gave my ticket and I had sat down and had, I had left my coat and my book bag. And then I went back. I went to get my lunch, came back and somebody was sitting in my chair. And I said, oh shit, somebody's sitting in my chair. And I see my brother, my all my friends here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I and I asked the guy, "Yo, you sitting in my chair?" And then he he went, "Whoa, this is this is not your chair." Next thing you know, my brother said, and my friend said, "Yo, get up." They, oh, okay. I didn't know he was your brother. And so the guy got up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm already connected at the school. Yeah, so it yeah, was yeah. like, you know, again, it was. I think you know I was blessed to be connected with a lot of you know people that. That was someone, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like had, you know, something going on during that time. And I think, you know, I grew up safe, you know, I never had to worry about, you know, like I used to wear big gold chains. Yeah. You know, I still have gold chains, but, you know, I used to have bigger gold chain. I used to walk around the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, I remember when when people was getting shot for the eight ball jackets. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and and that sheep was skins. and sheepskin or leather bombers, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and and I used to rock all that kind of stuff, okay, because Whoa. Jew man was right there, so yeah, you know. Um, and you wasn't scared. No, I used to walk around, you know, like people would say, "Yo, you crazy," 
Yeah. Why, yo? Yeah. Yeah, and then the eight ball, you know, people were, you know, it was in a, I think a homo like a six months to a year that, that on the front page was somebody dying from an eight ball jacket that he didn't want to give up this eight ball jacket. Yeah. And he got killed because the eight ball jacket was made out of like a shirling sheepskin material, mm. but it was multicolors. And these jackets, they were like from 900 to wow. like $1,800 jacket. Wow. They were custom made, some of them. Yeah. And people, you know, hey, if I take that from him, I could sell it easy for $500, $600. Yeah. That was money yeah. back then. So, you know, I was lucky that, you know, one, I didn't travel too much away from my neighborhood. Sure, sure, sure. You know, say if I did, you know, they probably thought, you know, you know, I always had like that walking around with a grill face yeah. and I think that helped out too. And my father always showed me like when you walk, you know, always walk with like you, you got something in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that sure. helped out and then after that is it's you yourself like, you know, to say to yourself like, okay, um, I could do it. Yeah. You know, the same thing when I first started when I started, oh yeah, let me go back to James Moore High School. So with the ticket, I remember doing the ticket time, and again, I had a, you know, I was hungry. In that time, you know, it was good food. It was hamburgers, meatloaf, hot dogs. Yeah. You know, you don't get that in school anymore, but yeah. back then it was pretty good. So, so they used to, you know, when the day, today was um, number 13. So you go use number 13, and then the next day, 14, the ticket. Yeah. So the people that came in, they have a 13, they would throw it on the floor, mm. you know. So what I did is I would pick up all the 13s or all the number threes. Yeah. Like if it's 23 or 20, uh, 43, anything with threes on it, yeah. I used to grab it and make them into eight. Ah, So sure, I took sure, all sure. the threes, I just went out there with a black ink, and I did it really perfect that you can't even tell. Wow. It was an eight. So now I figure out, like every You're number ready. eight, <laughs> I'm eating for free. Yeah. Or I will sell. You sell tickets. Yeah. You sell the tickets. Yeah. Because I think they were like, I think uh, like 75 cents to a dollar to yeah. buy, you know, if you didn't have a ticket, yeah. you pay a dollar, something like that something for lunch. Like that, yeah. So I sold it for 50 cents. So yeah. I made 50 cents in high school. Like, yeah, yeah. 50 cents, 50 cents. <laughs> you know, so and, then, and then people started doing it, taking it a number two, trying to make it into an eight. And then I think they, they realized that, and then they, they started checking all the tickets. Okay. Okay. After like a year, wow. two years, after I had a good run, everybody started like, jump, jumped in the bandwagon. Wow. And that. So, you know, again, it was like growing up and using my art ability to just, you know, to get by and, and to hustle. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This is simple hustle, but yeah, yeah. it's still something that, you know, like, you know, that I was doing yeah. for me to continue doing what I was doing. And, and it's, it's interesting because even, even before you got into graffiti, you know, you were kind of drawn to like, I guess you could call like typeface or things like that, manipulating, right. you know, like whether with the letters or the, even the stamp kind of, you know, it was a kind of, kind of That helped me out. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Um, so then after that, so... What, what year did you graduate high school? Um, I don't know, like 80... 83, 84. Okay, 83, 84. Okay. Where, and, I, was, and, I was like a super senior when I graduated. Super senior, okay. <laughs> and, now, now you, you you, actually, you know, uh, I've seen interviews with you, you actually met some some members of your task crew in high, right? High right. School. Right, so yeah, so when I went to James Moreau High School, um, I had, um, you know, I was already in already, so in the, as a junior year, I had, they gave me, um, um, Weight training oh, okay. gym, so I had a, yeah. I had a, I had a gym there. So yeah. I'm in the gym, you know, pumping it up, I'm getting kind of big, and and I had to bring my own locker. Yeah. The locker, you know, because they allow you, you have to wear your gym clothes, and that was like the shorts and some and a t-shirt, same James yeah. High School. Right. Yeah, yeah. The shorts was probably too short. I don't know. I didn't yeah. like. I never yeah. liked the shorts, <laughs> but you had to wear it. But um, I remember one time, like that, that, that first, when I came back, you know, for the, for the second semester of school, I didn't have a lock. Mm. So shit, I need to put my clothes somewhere. So I, like, I looked around, looked around, I saw this skinny guy with some glasses on. I said, yo, can I put my clothes? 
and you know, I'm like this. Yeah. Okay, I put my clothes in, and the guy looked at me like, all right, like, and I said, he said, all right, like, first, and his mind, he probably was saying, what the fuck, I ain't gonna give you, and then I said, no, no, I just want to put my clothes in, his mind, he probably thought I was trying to rob him, yeah, yeah, I said, no, I was really, really being fair, like, yo, really, I want to put my clothes there, Yeah. and I, then, you know, when you, we meet again, and when, uh, some, when the period's over, I'll get my clothes back, so he said, all right, then I saw him, I waited for him, and then I got my clothes, and I said, don't worry, tomorrow I'll bring my lock, and I don't have to use you, and I forgot a cat. <laughs> I think I went to, you know, I went, when I went home, I started hanging out, whatever the case. I went back, and I saw the guy again, and he looked at me like, damn, man, this guy's still, you know, like, I know his mind, he said, I don't want to talk to this guy, this guy yeah. is trying to get me, you know, so I put my clothes back in, boom. And then the third or fourth day, again, I forgot my lock again. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I keep forgetting my lock. And, I, and then I, I remember buying it, and I left it there to grab it, but I left the house too early. And then the third or fourth day, I didn't see the guy no more. Yeah. Damn, so I just got to put it somewhere, you know, and put it anywhere. So now uh, I'm in a major art class. Like, you know, it's like they, they gave me because I was a good artist. Yeah. And I was drawing, you know. You know, that time was like the early of graffiti for me. And I look, and I look, and, I, and I'm like, you know, it's like it's like 25 minutes to like a period, I think it was, right? Yeah, about 30 minutes. Yeah. 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting here, and there's a guy sitting in front of me, but all day he's like this. Let me get this thing. So all day he's like this. <laughs> Joy. And I was like, and I like, and then like after like 15 minutes of the class, I kept looking, and it's the guy that I take the, the lock. That I share my lock. I yeah. said, Yo, what's up? What's up man? Yo, man, how you doing? Yeah. And he's looking at me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing art also. Yeah, yeah. And then I look, and he, he's doing letters. Okay, yeah, I said, yeah, Oh, you're yeah. doing letters, and you know, it turned out to be bio. Oh. That's crazy. And I say, and I say, oh shit, what you doing? He said, doing my name, B I O. I said, oh, that's cool, man. I'm doing like, you know, like my name, B G. And then the next thing you know, you know, we became like partners. That's crazy. And like wow. partner in crime. Yeah. You know, to this day, you know, so. And it all started out in gym class. Yeah, it started out in gym class. <laughs> we, then, we, then we became good friends. And yeah. I and I kept telling him, yo, you know, like I want to be nice. So I, every day. I went on a mission to be really nice. So, and he said, like, one of the things that you have to probably do is, you know, your hand style. Yeah. So he had a good hand style. So, okay, maybe I have to go. So, and every day I started practicing hand style. It's like if you go into break dancing, yeah. you have to have footwork. Sure. You yeah, can't yeah, go yeah. start break dancing without no footwork. So, yeah. so, so in graffiti, it's the hand style before you do anything else. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. you do the hand style. And then you do the throw up. The throw up is like a simple letters you fill in sure. really fast. And then you do the simple style that you fill in with colors and the background. And then you have the wild style like phase two. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. You know, he's one of the guys that, that I looked up to. So let's, let's go back a little bit because I really want to explore um, your early style writing. You know, just just the fundamentals in high school, right? right. Like, so you, you meet Bio and he's, he's already aware of style writing. Uh, about, yeah, he's you know, already because, because he's the trains are already hit at this time. So he was already kind of aware. Did he introduce you to it, or how? how, how did... No, no, I I've already had seen it. You seen it too. Okay. I seen it All because right. again, I I took the subway from where I live at to James Monroe oh, High School. Monroe. So yeah, the, yeah. that was the six line, and okay. that was that was like run by Duster, the Dust. scene. Okay. U U A U B A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you had a lot of old writers like Part. Part, that was, yeah, that's yeah, part yeah. of that. You know, that, he was like the king of the six line. I didn't even know that till years later. Two years later, okay. No, yeah. I mean years later to when, now. To now, oh, okay. That he was like the king of the six line. He had so many pieces on the six line that I, I never really saw. Yeah. But it was, okay. Right, because he he was doing them in the seventies and during the seventies, you know, you weren't taking I wasn't really. I was taking a train, oh, but okay. I wasn't aware of the graph. Of the graph, right. Like, okay. you know, like the the graph. And that's later on, like, like right now, like, like, you know, like, 
and nobody talk about grime, you will pass all graffiti walls, you won't pay attention. Yeah. Now, yeah. but they mention it now, you'll be like, oh, look, that's graffiti over there. Oh, look, that's more graffiti. Yeah. And now you yeah. start seeing the name. Oh, Absolutely. shit, that's the same name I saw in Brooklyn. Yeah. He's up in the Bronx here. Yeah. So that's how, you know, that's how it starts. So, and that makes you want to go, oh, I want to be a graffiti artist. Yeah. So, so during that time, I was already, you know, I was already good at finger painting. Yeah. I was already good of pencils. I was good on in black and white ink. I was yeah. already good in acrylic paint, doing wow. oil. I was doing still life. I was doing contour drawing. Yeah. Anything that was art related, yeah. I was really I was really good at it already. Yeah. You know, even my teacher taught me like, you know, like she would put like a, a person. Yeah. Can you draw that person, you know, the whole day you would draw. Like it was like major art. Yeah. So I would draw and and I would say it looks nice. And my teacher would be like, doesn't look good. And I said, what are you talking about? It looks good. <laughs> he said, look, the person is tall, and you made the person on your drawing look like a midget. <laughs> like, you know, like the proportion sure, sure, the wasn't proportion, good. But right. for me, yeah, with yeah, purpose, yeah. she showed me, yeah. like, you know, she said, this is circle, 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 this is how you do it. The elbow lands here, and that's it. Yeah. And then that's what I started doing. I said, oh, okay. And then now, now I'm on proportion. And then she will be like, her name was Miss Jorkins. She will be like, okay, today we're going to draw this flower. So we draw the flowers. Da, 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 da. And then tomorrow will be like, okay, we're going to draw the flower in, in 15 minutes. Yeah. Or today, 10 minutes. Yeah. And today we're going to draw it in five minutes. And you're like, oh, we're going to draw it. And yeah. people complain, we can't do those. It. it said, you know, just draw it. Yeah. So and then, so she showed, like, she was showing me, like, sometime. You don't have to put a lot of details to make it look like a like a flower. You yeah. can just do a couple of images, and it looks like flowers. So, yeah. so at the same time, she was showing me like different way of art, you know, but not really physically grabbing my hand, sure. just saying, "Look, this is what you have to do." So, so all my skills was getting better. Then, then when the same thing when it came doing graffiti, yeah, there's no teachers for this. Sure. So you really yeah. had to learn by myself, but. And that's how I improved my skills, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Bio was doing his, and then at the same time, we had uh, a couple more graffiti artists that was also in the class. In the class. You, so, had, so. you had, like, Bond 5. Mm. Oh, you Bond had Bond 5. Yeah. 5. You had another guy uh, called Poem. Mm. He, he, this guy was really good with doing letters. P-O-M-E. P-O-M-E, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, these yeah. guys was really good at what they were doing. And I, Bonfire had a really dope hand style, and he had a good, simple style. And then Poem had like almost like a wicked, wild style, mm. simple style, you know. So, 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 so they they were the one who was like, you know, I would I would look at their style, and then after a while, I started doing my own style my own because style. that's how you start. Like you know, you like you will pick like if somebody's dancing, they had a particular um, foot movement you will follow that but then you add your own, add your own. Yeah. like you yeah, add a twist yeah, to yeah, it yeah, you yeah, know so, yeah. so that's what i started doing and then to get into the graffiti well yeah because because bio wasn't his real name so obviously in high school was he was he styling bio or was he well, he was doing actually his name is wilfredo so he was doing will w-i-l will. and then what did you start doing uh, I was doing like other name. I, I had like a name called Gap, G A P P. I G-A-P-P. didn't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, like, <laughs> so yeah, then yeah, I yeah. I had another name. I didn't like. It. I don't remember the name I was using. So every name I didn't like. Try them out. Yeah. yeah. Then the only name that I like is because um after a while, I, you know again I was playing softball. Yeah, you were So I was real. I was real nice. So if there if there'll be man second and third and we losing. They'd be like, yo, bring the battles in. So that's what I used to do. Like, I was so nice that I um, I could hit it over first, I could hit it over third. Yeah. You know, I could, I'm going to switch it. So, yeah. so I used to bring the battles in. Yeah. And so cool. bring, bring. So bring. then so I said, oh, bring, that sounds like a good, <laughs> that's a good name. So yeah. I started doing B-R-I-N-G, but it was too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I cut it down to B-G. I took the first letter and the last letter and put it together. Yeah. And then the number, the number came about 
you know, so I had a guy from James Moore High School called Griff, and every day we used to battle. Yeah. You know, the battle was we take any name and we do it once and we do it again two times and we do it again a third time. Yeah. So we said, okay, cool. So I did first time, then the second time I changed the style. The third one, I changed the style. Yeah. And then he says, do a fourth one. All right. And I got stuck. <laughs> I couldn't do a fourth style. And he did a fourth. I said, oh. So I kind of like lost that battle. I said, oh, yeah. man, I lost. So I went back and I practiced some more. I did maybe up to six. So we did, we, we did the same thing, a different name. We did the same thing. And he went up and did like two more than me. Yeah. I was like, damn, man, this yeah. guy's really good. <laughs> so then I went, and I think it was summertime, that yeah. whole summer. Uh, I was walking home, and I went by this, uh, I think it's this paper company, they did the cardboard, and they had like these two by three rows, like blank, like they were thrown on the garbage, so I asked the guy, look, can I take this? He said, hey, that's garbage, you could take it. Yeah. So I grabbed, I don't know how much it was, like 50 to 60 of them, I grabbed it, and I started walking, and then one guy started screaming, yo, what you doing? That's not garbage. Next thing you know, I'm running <laughs> with a whole bunch of paper, and I got home. You know, he, he probably gave up on me, and, and that was where I used to like the whole summer. Instead of being, that, yeah. and I was practicing every day. What I did is I, I, I would, I would do a line straight in the middle, and I do like cross, and I do another line. I do like three lines, and I made like these small rectangle boxes so so I could do maybe like almost like 30 to 36 of them and then I would do the style yeah I do one style here then I take that I say okay I like the way my B is looking on this one I'm, I'm gonna use that B I don't like the G I change the G then I, I come back again and I say okay I like and maybe change the B a little bit, but I like the first G, and I'll keep going like oh, that. Wow. So, to, to, uh, to I learn, and then, you know, again, again, you, there's nobody really behind me. Explain. So, yeah. I just took ideas, and that time there was no books yet, like, yeah. software, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's nothing to follow. Remember, there's no internet that you could Google everything now. So, Did you hear the, uh, uh, Street, right? The bench, yeah, time? yeah, I did that. I did you that. Did I, that? I, yeah, I could tell you that in a few. So, okay, cool. so I used to, you know, again, I drew yeah. my name. So let me, let me get that pen. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you know, so again, I if I did like a. B. So that's a BG one eighty three. That's pretty quick. And then you know, but you I take it. You right. So I should. And then I take. You know, so yeah. I do. I do that. Like this. And then um. What I did is um, I go like this and I flip it over, and you still could see a BG183. Put it against the light. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can see it. Where you uh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll also scan it too, so. It'll show you see how you still yeah. say you still read BG183? Yeah, 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 so yeah. this is a way that I started teaching myself. But now the style is always different. When you, whatever you turn it, it's a letter. It's a letter. Oh, right. Easy. So so you go like this, yeah. you get like a U. And over here you get like a W. And then here you get like, you know, all different style when yeah. you when you reverse the letters. Yeah. Here I could say, okay, this will look like a, like a nice E. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. High school, right? This and this was friend. in high school. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. like uh, me at home, at home. Okay. doing this. So and then right. the 183 again started with the guy Griff. So in the end, I got to beat him. He said, You look like you got like 183 styles. <laughs> so, so I kept the number just to, yeah. me just to mess with him. Just to mess with him. Oh. 183 styles. So oh, that's goodness. how the 183 started yeah. with the BG 183. That's amazing story. That's wild. So and this is how I started. Like, this is where if I teach somebody how to do grab, I said, This is what you have to do. 
And you know, and they'd be like, they'd be amazed. Oh, I didn't know. Wow, look, I could get letters. You know, you get numbers, you get whatever you want. And that's how, you know, that's how it is. So, you know, then I started like, you know, doing the 183. You know, like, it doesn't really matter like what I do. It just, it just, you know, for now, it's just, you know, having fun. Again, there's no erasing. It's all just freestyling. Okay, so you're in high school, and at that time, high schoolers were were out there hitting trains and you know doing doing pieces in black books. So did you develop relationships at you know, like 149th Street and well, so, tag other people's black books, or did you keep your black okay, books? Or how? So, so before the 149th Street, you know, like first you have to be accepted in the oh. graffiti world. Mm. It's not like. I'm a graffiti artist, and people gonna come up to me and say, "Oh, you write graffiti?" Oh, you know, even yeah. when I first started, it's like your toy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Wow. No, no, I was a toy. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody starts as a toy. It's like you as being a writer doing poetry. Yeah. People are not gonna read your stuff. Oh, look, I just wrote it. They're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now, now you know, now people see your work, yeah. they want to read it. Yeah. They want to each one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how it started. So with me. Now, you know, I had like the group of guys in James Moore High School, they, they, they are, they're probably in the game for like two, three, four years in the yeah. game. And so I will try to fit in. So I would go, you know, with them, like, you know, like smiling, yeah, yeah. They, they're making a joke and I'm like, ah, like I'm laughing too. And then they all say, okay, we're going to go up bombing, street bombing. Yeah. And then I, I will follow them. They'd be like, where you going? Yeah. I said, I'm gonna write, you know, no, 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 we don't know, we don't know you. Yeah, yes. Oh. Get away, I said, oh shit. So I would hang, I still would hang out with them. I yeah. like, you know, that guy, you know, who's this guy here? Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> Anybody know this guy here? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was that guy. Yeah, yeah. that guy, okay. yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they didn't wanna like accept me as a writer. I said, oh wow, so I have to. So and then like, you know, again, I go into the phases, like, you know, I found the whole bunch of papers, um, my skills level is going up, but yet I'm not getting accepted in yeah. the graffiti world. They're not really, you know. So I went up by myself. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, hearing hearing wow. the story. Like, you know, first is how you paint a train. Yeah. Where you go? Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Where, where can I go? Yeah. So, you know, but hearing them talk, they were like, oh, you could go up to a layup. Sure. A layup is like an elevated train. That they park them in the center between two train stations in the summer. Yeah. The reason why they park them in the summer because it's warm. You know, it's easy to start the train and to put them back in the express line. So I heard that, and then I I took the train and I saw it parked after after rush hour after like 7 p.m. They will start laying them up. Yeah. Which and, station did you and see? And then first? like you know you had like from. From Elder to Soundview, from Soundview to San Lawrence, from San Lawrence to Castle Hill. Sure. And then, and then um, I think it was San Lawrence to Parchester, and from Parchester to Castle Hill. And then you had, you know, like the Middletown Road, like, you know, yeah. more. Like, I didn't go too far Here out because that yeah. was like the white graffiti artists. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They, they catch you over there, they will beat you down. Yeah. So, we heard you know, Spanish like people, that. you know, so <laughs> sure. I, so anywhere that, you know, I, I know I'm going to get hurt, there's no reason for me to go. For sure, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah, saying yeah. like, you know, play, you know, let's be smart about this. <laughs> and so, I I went to that and I remember I, I got my first, uh, I, I went to a store and I racked like, like a total of six cans. Yeah. So, but I only brought two to go to the layup because, and then I've been practicing my throw up. Okay, all right. I've been doing my throw up. I've been practicing. You know, I used to go to my backyard where I used to live at in the basement, practice and practice. Now I, I'm think I'm good enough to do this throw up. So yeah, I get to the train. I'm there by myself. It was like I'm looking around. Nobody in the, in the station. So I jump down and I do my throw up. Yeah. You know, my heart is pumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. What'd you write? All right, you know, I did my throw up, BG. BG, not 183. No, not 183. Yeah, yeah. BG. BG. Yeah. Boom, I come up. I 
I did it. I did it. <laughs> so then I, I went back and I went back to the group. Yeah. And I and I say, oh, I just did trains. You did trains? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, I did trains. And they were like, okay, cool. And uh, I did one car. Boom. They said, you did what? I said, I did one car. They said, you did all oh, ten cars. We're gonna ten the ten cars. Yeah, sure. You know, you didn't do one car. You did ten cars. You trying to say you did ten cars? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did ten cars, and I'm like, okay. Right. Then I went, okay, damn, I gotta do ten cars. <laughs> so I went back by myself again. I jumped in the track, and I did all like wow. one one name in each car. Wow. Okay. And I, and I went back. You know, I think I spoke to the same guy again. I said, yo, I just did train again yesterday. They were lay up, and I did, I did. The whole set of ten cars. He said, "You did, you did, you 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 did ten cars." I said, "Yeah, you did both sides, or, <laughs> or you did one side." I said, "Oh my god, you gotta go back." You know, said, yeah, I gotta go back because yeah. you know, in bombing, you gotta bomb. Yeah, you know, oh. you know, so you can't go and do one and you done. Because yeah. who gonna see? That's like I don't know how many cars in a subway system, but you're not gonna see your name, or nobody gonna really gonna see your name. So, sure. so. And now I did one. I got 11 cars. Next time I went, I did front and back. Yeah. So now I got front and back. Yeah. You know, and, and then at the same time, there was not only like one set of trains, but there was other set of trains. So you went to all of them? Yeah. Or you just went to one station only? I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah. shit. So now I went back and did... All the different station. All on the six, huh? All on the six train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are trying. No, no, it's this is the way this of bombing. This is grab. Yeah. You know, yeah, again, yeah, yeah. you know, there's no book, you know, you could read that show you how to do this. You know, you had to really know someone that's done it before that could help you. Yeah. Remember, this is all underground. Oh, and, okay, yeah. and no one really has a face. You don't know who really is a bomber or a tiger. Yeah. Cause nobody gonna be like, yo, I'm doing trains and yeah. and, and, and publicize it to any. So, you know, the only people that knew that I knew was these guys, and nobody else. And then you know, from there, I was doing trains. Now I'm I'm, I'm in like about three months doing these trains, yeah. like doing my throw up yeah. everywhere. I'm taking the tag BG. Then I think I started doing the BG 183, and. And I couldn't see my name on the train. Yeah. Went by. Okay. I said, why? I've been, I, I've done more than like 200 cars or 300 cars. I can't, why I can't see it? Yeah. And then I started speaking to Bio and, and Bio said, oh, he said, he said, don't worry about it. If you can't <laughs> see it, somebody else is seeing it. Mm. But I said, I, I got me a little happy, but now I got, became sad again. Like, no, yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to yeah, see yeah, what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. And then, like another three weeks passed by, I look up to the train and what I see, my name. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> then I went up again and went up again, and I and I asked Bio, Bio, come on, man, it's me and you go up. He's yeah. like, for real? I said, yeah, come on, it's me. And then me and him started going up oh. and, and doing all these um, bombing together, and he became like my graffiti partner, and we got a whole bunch of cans and we said we're gonna do our first my first piece on the train wow so i went okay you know so it was one of the coldest day i think it was christmas time so we did i did a bg and i was doing bg with two e's oh so i was doing okay. bgs bgs yeah, yeah okay. we, you know like you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it was funky for me so i did a b g e e and i remember spraying and I was catching these drips, mm. and that was looked nasty, like it was ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the colors was good, but the drip was like so crazy, and I was really upset with it because I caught so many drips. Because that's how that's how you could tell when somebody got experience. You yeah, know, the, the drip, way they yeah. spray, if they spray with a lot of drip, you know already know that this guy's a rookie, he's yeah. a toy. Yeah. And I was a toy, so I went like that. I looked at it. And then I saw two other guys on the platform. They were they always they also was writers. Yeah. And then when they came by, they were like, "Oh my God, that shit look awesome. That shit look good. <laughs> Yo, you you really did it. You." And I said to myself, "Come on, you're joking, right? Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, BG, yeah. you rock. You and Bio killed it. Yo, 
yo, your guys rocked it. I said, for real? Yeah. I said, he said, yeah, that shit look hot. It's the hottest shit running right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and that gave me more confidence to yeah. go back out there to do more. Absolutely. What yeah. was that first piece? Do you remember yeah, the I layout actually, of it? I actually have a, I have a photo, okay. I have a photo yeah, yeah. of it. I actually put it up on my Instagram oh, uh, okay. not, not too long ago. So, so I did that. And then, um, and then you start hearing about writers going to this place called 149th Street in the bench. Sure, yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. Bench, what's that? That's 149th Street and Grand Concourse. Yeah. You go there and in the, in the bottom level on the uptown side where the two and the five train pass is the bench. That's yeah. where all the writers hang out. So I went there and then it was like a scary place to be. <laughs> Every, now, you know, people that wasn't even writers was yeah. hanging out there. Yeah. They yeah. were called stick up kids. Sure. Yeah. They were robbing people for like anything. Like, yeah. you know, they was not robbing for graffiti. They was robbing in general like a gold Money. chain, sure. yeah, a pair of sneakers, yeah. or a coat, coat yeah. a jacket. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, yeah. and me and and we was like, that's the place you go. You, know, you yeah. want to rob because that's all the connection. You know, you could go downtown or you could yeah. go uptown. And you could see the people. And back then, we that it was uh, some stairs that you, there's, there was a stair that they took it down. There was a, there was an elevator there that took that down. You would go up to the elevator and there was an overpass. And you could stay in the middle, look at the whole station. Yeah, and you yeah, could come yeah. down to the other side. But that whole station, that whole platform got taken down. But that was the way you go from the downtown to the uptown, and that's where everybody met. Yeah. You know, like from the, like in the movie, you see them all hanging out on the bench and yeah. they're talking about, you know, like what was new coming to the to the station. Sure. That's why the five and two became more like the most, like the most view yeah. in every train station. So that's why I stood in the by the six train, the two or the five. That's yeah. the only train that I really really hit. Sure. Because those are what the main station where everybody would look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was easier also to take photos. Sure. Because um, the train would run through like like through Interval, and Interval was a station that you could go here and go underneath and come back here mm -hmm. without getting off. Mm -hmm. Or the rest of the station you had to physically get off, get off and, and go around. around. Yeah, so yeah. this you could connect. So you had like the one eighty if you had the East Stream on. I mean yeah. East Stream and you had also Interval that was like a platform and then the the bench. But you people usually didn't took pictures there, you know. Yeah. People went there for one, you bring your black book and you have famous people come and write on your black book. Yeah. If you got your black book back, because you know, sometimes you gave it and it was gone. Yeah. Oh they take it. Yeah, they took it like oh Where's my black book? Who got my black book? <laughs> I gave it to you, I know, but I gave it to this guy, and then I don't know what happened. Yeah, and yeah. probably the first guy you gave it to took it. Yeah. But he's saying, this guy, I gave it to this guy. He just jumped on the train with it. And yeah. the book is gone. You know, and then in the book, you had like already famous people on there, so your book is gone. Oh, and sad. maybe that same guy got his book, that book taken yeah, from him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a, a time that, you know, you couldn't, if you was not really like a, like a tough writer or yeah. somebody was on point, you know, you got your shit taken. Even yeah. like you gave a marker to somebody, your marker was gone. Taken. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. with my marker? I don't know. I used it last. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the way it was. So yeah. you got to be, a, so that's why I really didn't bring no black book there. Like I didn't want to be like, damn, man. You know, like, Did you save any of yours? Uh, I have a few. Not, too, few. Many. not too many. Not too many. Not too many. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't think, um, actually I lost like one that I had and I started a new one, but I never got to finish it. But you know, it just that's the way. Like for it's me, I I didn't even took a lot of photos of my work. Yeah. You know, I got you know people like Ken, Sam, uh, this guy named Rise that he took a lot of photos of my stuff. Like they you know bio took a lot of photos of of his stuff. Mac, you know Sam. I already mentioned him. But there's still people that was part of my crew. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they, they they was making sure. They were taking photos. And so, again, we started, you know, with the task crew. You know, uh, they put me down with TAT. You know, after I did, you know, you know, um, Brim was the one in charge. It was Brim. It was um, Mac. 
bass and bio. So mm. those four, they met in ju- they met in junior high school. Sure. And I met bio in high school when he got to high school, so like a year later. Crew. Yeah, there was already a crew. It was only it was TAT. Yeah. yeah. But they were mostly like street bombers and all street that. Street bombers. Okay. You know, like uh, I, and then bio was doing pieces with colors, but I I went in there and started doing like let's do crazy pieces, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I started doing characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I was really doing stuff. I got and and now so me and Bio decided to to do like a like a train and that's when the white elephant came out. Oh, okay, okay. The white yeah, elephant yeah, is yeah. the is the train that they like the MTA said these trains if you ride on these trains your paint will just fall off. Yeah. So it's not gonna stick. Yeah. So there's so a lot of writers that that was painting in the seventies, like the like the scene and the days, the crashes, the, the men, yeah, yeah, rev. They stopped yeah. writing completely, yeah. and a yeah. lot of them went into the galleries. Sure. Yeah. 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 You know, they went to the galleries, like you know. If it's true. Yeah. All yeah. those guys yeah. went to the galleries. Yeah. And so we was. The next generation, we're the third generation of graffiti artists that went in into the 80s yeah. and started like, you know, for us it was like, you know, like, I don't I don't care about the galleries. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The, the doing canvases, I want to paint trains. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm in the beginning today. I'm, 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 I'm already in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. And and then the white elephant came out. Oh, my God. That was like a, a white paper. Yeah, yeah. It was clean, you know, <laughs> like, you know, they're giving us a white train, yeah. you know. So, you know, the colors would be so rich when you paint on top yeah. of them. And you and could paint on them. Yeah, you could, they that, said. yeah, they was, they was not <laughs> dripping, it was nothing, it was <laughs> like, it stuck like a regular canvas board. Yeah. 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 So now, now you're hitting these trains and I'm loving it. Um, my style is improving to like top notch and, and my other... And so now I'm in, I'm enjoying it. And then a lot of, a lot of my crew members was like, yo, BG, like the nicest one in the crew. Yeah. Mm. Uh, can you do me an outline? Yeah. So I was doing outline for my crew. I was like, kind of like a ghost writer. Sure. So I was ghost writing a lot of pieces there for my crew. And I didn't mind. I didn't yeah. mind doing it. Like, I was like, yeah. wow, you know, they, and then after like a, a couple months later, a year later, they stopped calling me. Like I don't want nothing because they they got their own style. Yeah. They they already improving everything. So, yeah. and they know life life changed a little bit. Let me. Uh, then I started talking, you know, hanging out with Brim, and we met with Bambada, African Bambada. Sure, sure, sure. And now African Bambada is um he asked he asked me and Brim to paint the inside of. The inside of the Bronze River Center. Sure, sure, sure. So we painted the inside where, where you know, where all these people were formed, like Red Alert. Yeah. If you look back in the videos, uh, it's called Body Rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you see all my graffiti that I did in the, in the video. Yeah. And there's characters, there's records, there's um, the Zulu Nation. We painted sure. the Zulu Nation inside the center. So it was me and Brim that painted the inside. Okay. A lot of people don't really know that history. Yeah. That I painted the whole inside. Wait, and what year was it that? It was like 82, 83, 83 around there. Yeah, 83. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you Google it, you see all my pieces that I did. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I, again, I didn't took no photo of me actually sure. making it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But everybody know it was me because the style. The style. The style sure. was there, you know, so... And then I did that, and then we. Oh, I also did um, uh, the first hip hop uh, on TV, cause nobody mm-hmm. haven't done any type of like DJing sure. and graffiti and break dancing yeah. as a almost like a TV show, almost like before MTV, yeah. before BET, yeah. was a, a show called Graffiti Rock. Graffiti rock, okay, okay. And so we did, me, Brim, and and Shane, we did the graffiti for for that show. That was air 
on a Saturday uh, um, picks Channel 11. Mm. And then they played it again a second time, but it was never picked up. Okay. They felt that it was kind of like too grimy. Yeah, Like yeah. the pigs felt like, oh, I don't think this going to make money. And they they canceled it. So it was only one show. The show was great. You still could see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still see it online. YouTube probably. Yeah, you could YouTube yeah, 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 it. Yeah, it's, called, it's called Graffiti Rock. So me, yeah. Grim, and Shane125 actually painted this. So wow. Again, you know, that in, in, in the... In, you know, my movement into the graph was always, you know, always there, like, you know, being in the, in the right place at the right time. Yeah. You know, we did the stuff for Bambada. We did the Renegade of Funk. Mm, yeah. And that's a, a video that Shame and Brim comes out. And the first member that passed away, Dive. Not Dive, um, Dill. Dill. Yeah, my friend Dill. He passed away and... And later on, I actually did a memorial wall mm. for Dill. And that was my, really my first time drawing somebody's face yeah. with spray paint. Wow. Like taking a spray can and, you know, drawing the eyes, the nose. And it took me like three days. Yeah. You know, like the first day I, I finished it, but, you know, they said, oh, maybe you come back the next day, ask some more. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I did that. And, I, and then the third day we went back, you know, because that time... It was no, like, there was no time, like, you know, like, take sure. your time and everything. It was, we're doing it for ourselves. Yeah. We're not getting paid. We're yeah. just putting up a, a, a memorial wall for a friend that the first member of our crew died, so mm -hmm. we did that. And then I also painted um, a rest in peace for um, Cowboy, oh, okay. Grandmaster Flash. Sure, so sure, me sure. and Brim in Bronx River Center, we went and we painted... Cowboy, yeah, you know, it was like a, one of the, the first memorial wall for a rapper that passed away that yeah. we painted on the, in the again in the early '80s. So, you know, during that time, you know, um, life started. You know, I'm mean, getting older. I'm already 19, going on 20. It was time to pay bills. You know, my mom said, "Yo, you got to get a job." You know, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so you know, I said, you know, because I always worked. You know, again, sure. I worked with the security. Yeah. On uh, Nighthawk with um with Comanche that I was making money from there. So I was always making, but you know, I needed like a more of a of a sturdier, like you know, like a five, like a nine to five job. So, yeah, yeah. So my father put me on to work with him. So I was working with my father for like. Um, for a good three years, and again, he was um he used to work in a door company. Okay. You know, picking up hollow metal doors. Yeah. And frames, and these doors and frames were they were, they were heavy. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like like for the like for apartment house, and during that time, a lot of apartment houses was getting built. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the in the eighties, so you know, so I was working for a company. You know, what I did was like just. Um, sand it down like with sand, like you know, with a with a machine. Yeah. Sand it down, wipe it, flip it, do the same thing on the other side of the door, and then hang it to be painted. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. and each door was like about eighty pounds, ninety pounds. Some doors were like hundred and fifty pounds, yeah. depending yeah. what kind of size and the material. Yeah. So, I remember the first, uh, the the. The next two or three days, my body was aching. I couldn't close my hand because the machine was vibrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my mom came up to me. I'm laying in the bed, covered up like this, and she's saying, "Do you want some Tylenol?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm trying to be tough." She said, "Are you sure?" Uh, yeah, give it to me. I took the two Tylenol. And then after uh, like a couple of days in there. It was good. I was yeah. picking up the you dog. I was it. strong. I was yeah. like, yeah. So it was, it was a good time. And at the same time, I used to meet up with the guys. You know, we used to go and, and maybe paint trains. But, you know, it was a while. We did, like, the Ghost Yard. The Ghost Yard was on 207th Street. Mm -hmm. And that was, like, a yard that it was, like, only us. Yeah. No one else could go in. Yeah. Anyone yeah, yeah. who went in, you know, didn't left. They left. You know, like with the head crack, <laughs> uh, sneakers oh, wow. taken, yeah. jewelry. What they line had, was that on? There was a, it was a yard. Oh, it's okay, on the okay. one line. On the one line, that's what I thought. It's yeah, on the yeah, west yeah. side on 207. Yeah. 
And I think it's, I don't know if it's Broadway or. Yeah, I think it might so. Might be Broadway. Yeah, Broadway, Broadway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's on the one train. So, so um, was T-Kid like the go shot? T-Kid was also part of the crew. You know about T-Kid? T-Kid. Yeah, so T-Kid was a, a, a guy who was connected to the ghost yard. So he was uh, ready in. So I met T-Kid through, through Kent. Mm. You know, I met T-Kid um, and he introduced us to the ghost yard. And I remember painting with him. And this guy was so fast because he was really an uh, old school guy from the mid-70s. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, I met him in the eighties, so this guy was like so fast. Yeah. He was he was like <laughs> he did he did a train with us. It was a T Kid Ken and BG one eighty three. And he also did two more cars. Did like you know, one car, yeah. but he did like a he did a boots and a T Kid. Like he did all three names but I was still working on one, but I also did the characters uh, on that train. But this That's guy was crazy. really, really fast, you know. So, he, so he introduced us to going the to tour seven. So I was like one of the first member of TAT to go in there, yeah. you know, to meet T Kid and Kent. Also, got me in there also. So Kent is spelled with how? Who T Kid? Kent Kent. Oh, Kent with two N's. K E N N. K E N N. Okay. And then his partner was Sim C E M two. Mm. You know, they, these two guys was. Notorious in the, like in the graph world, like yeah. you hear those two guys coming, you will run. <laughs> Cause your your shit was taken. <laughs> you know, shit. There was no, you was no surviving. Yeah, you know, wow. everybody got robbed. Coke yeah, two yeah, got yeah. robbed. Co- by, you wow. know, they robbed Coke two. They they robbed everybody. They didn't care. Yeah, yeah. They wow. didn't care who you was. You know, say and you was this. I don't care. Are, are they still around? They still in yeah, they're still the active. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. still they're still active. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know, like so they were part of TAT. Yeah, they're part of TAT. So that's how TAT you know got to grow more. Like yeah. uh, again, when we went back to the to the bench at 149th Street in Grand Concourse, our crew was big. Yeah, we, we already had a reputation, and people already knew TAT was not playing. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were rob- robbing everybody. We were punching people in the face. What? You know what I'm saying? All the writers, yeah. you know, they they had to respect us. You know sure. what I'm saying? You know, they, sure. remember we was in our in our age. That, you know, like again, the hip hop world was there, so it was like you know, people was afraid of us. You yeah, know, what I'm saying yeah, knew yeah. that you know that if you if you had paint, and that time you gotta understand, like when we got when I got in the '80s, a lot of the paint stores. Was already burnt out, uh, so you couldn't really go racking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all the old school riders from the seventies up to the eighties already had places already. You know, that's where they started putting gates uh, behind yeah. these spray cans. So you couldn't get them. So you couldn't get them. So what you had to do is sometimes we had we had to travel mm. all, all the way to Philadelphia, to Boston, up uh, up in Connecticut, New over. Jersey. You know because. Those places still they have the can yeah. open, yeah. You know, like in like a shelf. Yeah. It's like this. You just grab it, take it. Yeah. Sometimes one of us didn't get back because they got caught. Oof. So you know it was a hard time during that time. So for us, is if we didn't know you as a writer, yeah. and you came in, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm painting over here. I said, yeah, you painting? <laughs> How many cans you got? <laughs> yeah, I got like twenty cans. All right, so leave the cans and wait goodbye. <laughs> be like, huh? What are you talking about? I said, leave your cans. You know, and you know, my people, they carry knife. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We had like machete. We, we didn't care. We, yeah. we had ice picks. Yeah. Wow. We didn't play. You know, yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah, we don't need, we don't need it to use it. We just, sure. gotta, we just pull it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, remember, we went to Utica one time. That's in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We went to Utica um, tunnels. And we painting, and, and then this um, two writers come up to us and say, "Yo, we are gonna rob y'all." We like, huh? You know about who? Yeah, we are gonna rob all, all of y'all. <laughs> and next you know, you know, uh, my boy said, "Yo, they got a gun," and we didn't have a gun, but they said to us, "Look, we let you rock, let you put your name, yeah, but leave all your paint behind." Yeah. And we're like, "Shit, what can we do?" So we paint it. We try to use how much can we use, yeah, yeah. and you know, like you know, and 
And we took some cans. We like, oh, put some of uh, the full cans and put them to the side. Yeah. We don't have to give them everything. Yeah. We give them something. At least they'd be happy. So yeah. we give them like at least 10 to 12 cans. And, you know, we give them like really empty cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe two full cans. Yeah, yeah. And that time they came out with like with new cans, Krylon. They came out with a color called Bonfire. Mm. That was like a new can line of colors. Yeah. Bonfire and Spanish Fly. I could hear him saying, yo, look at this color, bonfire. We never had bonfire before. You know, but then, you know, we left. Yeah. You know, we was upset. You know, we got robbed. You know, we never get robbed. Yeah. We got robbed. But at that time, you know, again, they had a gun. Yeah. We didn't, you know. And they, they was going to show us love. They're not going to cross out our work. Yeah. And, oh. and the work actually ran and... And you know we we did good. Yeah, we did good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was T A T. What does T A T stand for at that time? Okay, it was um tough ass teen. Tough ass teen. Yeah. Tough tough ass teenagers. You know the art team. You know anything that stands yeah. for T A T. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. for T A T. That's what you that's what it's used. Okay, and in the S you add it with and the then, guard. So to become Todd's crew, maybe explain a little bit about how that came about because okay. you add C C R U. Right, so on uh, the crew is because Bio came up with the idea crew because of you know, he didn't want to write crew as C R E W. So that was like yeah, slang, yeah. so we came you know, we did T A T crew. That was the and we had that in the early eighties. Crew mm. always been there. Oh, okay. And then um so now now we couldn't paint again, we couldn't paint no more in the in the subways. You know, it was hard, you know, it was everything was kinda locked. And then plus we're getting older. Yeah. You know, everybody's kinda like working, you know, like yeah. like that. So you no, know, we still would meet up and paint walls. So we would paint walls, we paint at the Hall of Fame, the Graffiti Hall of Fame. Sure. That's um strictly kings and better. Mm. You know, you had to be really good to paint there. Yeah. And again, you wasn't guaranteed that your work would survive that long. Sure. Somebody else might come and go over it, and then you had to at least take photo and accept that you went on, got over. Yeah. Although they didn't cross you out, you know, although they just did something brand new, yeah. it was okay. And so we did that, and then... What was your first wall at the Graffiti Hall of Fame? Like, 80-something or 90? It was, it was in, uh, like, I would say late 80s. Like, 80s. like 88, early, 89, right? yes, that's pretty early. Then uh, we painted there a lot more in the 90s. We painted there. Um, we painted there in the early 90s, um, but we painted the outside. The big wall. Mm. The big wall on the outside. Because yeah. nobody wanted to paint the outside wall because there was a chance that it got crossed out the same day yeah. or it didn't last. Yeah. So, so... Then this guy, a writer called Ezo, Ezo took over the the Hall of Fame. Okay. You know, before James Todd, before uh, before um, Jory TDS. Jory TDS. Yeah. You know, you had um, Ezo that was running Feel the Hall Feel. of Fame because he went to the school, he wanted to paint, so he asked us, "Look, um, you guys want to paint?" We say, "Yeah, but we don't want to paint the inside. Yeah. Like, we don't want to be." With other writers on the inside, yeah. just give us the outside wall, because nobody really wanted to paint the outside wall. Everybody, no, 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 we paint the inside. Yeah. So we took the outside wall and we did a nice production. Me, by and Nicer did a nice production, and 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 it lasted a long, long time. Nobody came. People took tag on it. Yeah. But it was cool because they took tag and they were like famous writers. Oh, okay, sure. So we sure. kept it. We didn't. We never buffed it. And then we went back like two, three years later. We did a new one, and I remember the one that I, my side that I painted on. What I did is I I replicated the Hall of Fame ah, okay, from the outside, yeah. like you know, like uh, and somebody took a photo. So I did that same, I think I same, that same that one. Before, I, yeah. I did that. You know, and then when I did, uh, when I was drawing like the the actual wall that we painting on the at the wall, yeah, I did the same thing that we did on the wall, yeah. but I forgot that I had to paint it again, <laughs> so I had to paint it smaller, yeah, because it's the one image, 
but I'm painting and I have to draw that same image again. So I had to redraw the same image again. And they got smaller. I said, ah, it's staying like that. I'm not, I'm not going smaller than that. But I did I did the whole thing and, and everybody loved it because yeah. I did the projects and and people used to come by. Like I went back a year, two years later and they would say, yo, I live in that building right there. And they would point yeah. to the mural. Oh, yeah. And okay. we loved this mural. It was yeah. one of the best murals Ever. done. You know, and then at the same time, you know, NYSA did a nice, cool area. Bio did a nice, cool area. So it was it was good. Yeah. So it lasted a long, long time. Nobody was crossing out. And then we went back, and we were trying to do a whole brand new wall. And they told us, like the people in the community said, no, don't take down the one that I painted. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. We're like, no, no, we have to be put. No, no, leave it. And uh, you know, like, you know, again, you know, now we are dealing with the community. Yeah. You know, so they the one who's in really in charge. When we leave there, the community is the one gonna be in that neighborhood. So we like, okay, we're gonna leave it. Yeah. We're not gonna cross it out. Yeah. And we left it. So every time we painted from from the ending of that mural to the end, I had to re replicate. That same mural on the wall again. <laughs> so you know, at the same time, it started improving my skills yeah. of painting. So you know, we was getting a lot of work. We started doing work for Coca Cola. That was like our first big contract. Wow. And you know, like you know, a lot of company wanted to know why a big company like Coca Cola is hiring three graffiti artists Latino from the Bronx. Yeah. Mm. yeah so yeah, we started yeah. getting a lot of, a lot much work. And then we got we got a contract with Coca Cola. We got a contract with McDonalds. Yeah. And then now we're painting advertising wow. on these walls. So but not too many like these landlords wanted to to accept you know, our work to be painted on their property. Yeah, yeah, So it yeah, was kind of yeah. hard. So so we started, like, you know, like a lot of a lot of graffiti on that painted murals didn't last it in the 90s. Yeah. They all were getting crossed out by all the writers. You know, like people were like, you know, doing throw up over them. Artists were trying to paint artwork, regular artwork. They were getting crossed out. Yeah. And we didn't want it to be that artist that we did work that got crossed out. Yeah. So, you know, we, we had to, like, you know, put pressure on a lot of writers. Yeah. You know, we did. So we, you know, we, we, we went in and, and did house visit. You know, we make sure that, you know, like, you know, you know who you know who we are. Yeah. You know, don't cross us out because, you know, it's not going to look right. Yeah. And a lot of these walls would, um, was, you know, graffiti arts that was doing, like, street bombing. But, you know, what we, what we was telling them, like, yo, we're not... We're not physically going over you. Yeah. Don't take offense, you know, because this is not what we're trying to do. You know, this is this is more business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the landlord's giving us permission to paint over it. Yeah. It's not personal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and we're going to buff the whole wall. We're not going to, like, leave a little piece of your name sticking sure. out that looks like we went against you. Yeah. We're going to yeah. cross everything. You know, we're going to go all over everything. And then... We were getting so much work that we said to ourselves, maybe it's good for us to like, maybe start hiring all the graffiti artists from, from you know like we from this part of the Bronx. Let's hire this artist from this part of the Bronx. Yeah. Let's hire this artist from Manhattan. Let's hire this artist. You know, at the same time, we not we ain't trying to step on P, uh, other writers' um, foot. You know, see they don't feel that we're going against them, so we started doing that. Like, look. We got two walls for you. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. To be paying $1,500 for you to do a wall. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And they went, yeah. they got the wall. And then we had like, a total, like, maybe like nine artists in New York City area doing wow. work for us. Yeah. You know, so we was only subcontracting the yeah. work and pay. And then we would take some for ourselves. Like sure. Our walls that we already had yeah. was our wall. And then, you know, everybody was like, task crew, task crew. You know? <laughs> now like, they're showing us love. And, you know, we're showing love right back. And uh, that's how that's how we started doing it. Then, you know, after you couldn't, then when the, the economy got messed up in 2000 and, what was it, then? 
eight, like seven. Fifteen? Like from 15. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. when nobody was making money, that yeah. inflection got hit hard. Was in, was it 07? No. That's when it first started, but it took took a few years, I think. Yeah, to yeah, I think in. Come into effect. Yeah, it could, it could be right. It could be, it could be 07, 09. So, yeah, 07, 09, yeah. It was so bad that that we don't know how we survive. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think yeah, because yeah. we was in a location that, that our office is based on, is based in, at the point. Sure, yeah, So yeah, the yeah. point was like, you know, they was really good with us. They because, just celebrated you know, their 25th anniversary, right? Right, yeah, right. Yeah. so we've Last been year. there. Actually, they, they, we've been there a little longer. So they, I think they're around but almost like 27 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, right, yeah, about yeah. 27 years. We've been around there like 26 years. Oh, okay. Point. Wow. So, so that, you know, they gave us a break. Like, you know, like, don't worry. We know the inflection is not good. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we love you guys to stay. Yeah. Because, you know, not only that we there, we also, you know, it's good for us to be there because we also do art. Yeah. And, you know, and the point, when they first started at the point, um, nobody was going to the point when it first opened up. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, again, it's in Hunts Point. Yeah. It's, it's a ghetto place. You know, it's more industrial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and parents was like, I'm not sending my kids over there. Yeah. <laughs> I better them to hang out in a corner grocery store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's kind of even worse. But I better not send them to the point. So yeah. they, the point was sent out a lot of, like, information that we got. After school program, we got the theater, theater, we got this, we got that, and nobody would show up. Yeah. So we spoke to, the point came up to us, you see, so you guys have any idea to bring people in? So we said, yeah, we know like Bambata. Yeah. Uh, we know Crazy Legs. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. you know, maybe these guys could come, maybe. So Bambata came through, opened up a uh, thing. And that got too crazy. They had like 400 people going in. <laughs> and then when they used to leave the point, it was like a riot. So yeah. they had to, they had to shut Ben Bonner down with that, with that. But again, that started like the people coming in. Yeah, yeah. And then Crazy Leg came in. We spoke to Crazy Leg. So Crazy Leg can, you know. And he said, yeah, it's probably a good good idea. Yeah. So he started teaching breakdancing class. Yeah. At the point. Yeah. So he started doing that. And then... And then the point came up to us, so look, we have a small budget, you know, maybe you guys could do graffiti class. Yeah. So, we're not teachers, I'm not yeah. a teacher. Yeah. You know, I can't, be, I can't see myself as a teacher, you know, Yo, you could teach. So they started bringing like elementary school kids, and they were too young. Yeah. They're too young, you know, one yeah. kid ate an eraser, <laughs> right? And I see Bio going like this to him, yo, yo, take that, you know. Oh my God. And you know, it was, it was then, then. They said, okay, maybe we're bringing high school kids. Yeah. And that worked out. That so we did out, uh, yeah. we did almost like a year program with them. Wow. That two or three of them became famous after they graduated and hired us Amazing. to okay. do work. Like one guy was um, in charge of a production company for, for music videos. Yeah. So he called us to do a video with Beyonce. Wow. And, and J. Wow. Cole called The Party. Yeah. Wow. So wow. we came out in the video, and he the one who got us in and got us paid to wow. do the video. And the funny story is, they kept telling us, guys, when you see Beyonce, don't give her eye to eye contact. <laughs> she don't like that. Wow. You know, this, this is the people who like you know. Sure. Said, okay. Don't ask her for her autograph. And yeah. then later on, they came they told us the same story again. And the third time. <laughs> So now I'm painting on the wall, doing doing this um doing the background. We're doing at the party, and Beyonce came, <laughs> and I stood stuck. <laughs> she said, "Oh, I love it. It looks nice." <laughs> <laughs> she spoke for like a, a like I don't know two three minutes. Yeah. And like, you know, like someone say, freeze, and I just froze there. I never saw Beyonce's face. Never looked at her. You know, the only That's one I so spoke funny. to her was nicer. Nicer was like, and me and Bio was the only one stuck. Like, froze. this, like, frozen, like. 
Um, wow. So because they said, kept telling her, don't look at her, don't look at her. <laughs> and I said, I believed it. <laughs> wow. And, you know, so life been, like, really good, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, me, by nights have been together since high school. Yeah. So you met um, nicer in high school then? Right. Then later on, I met nicer in high school. He was, like, the youngest one in the crew. Mm. And, you know, he used to just tag along. Yeah. Okay. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm going bombing. He said, can I go with y'all? They're like, okay, come. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I was yeah. cool. Everything. Yeah. You know, I invited so many people to to write with me, even when I first started. And I'd be like, okay, we used to do a lot of street bombing. You yeah. Know, I, I saw a lot of pre sweet tags, a lot of BS one eight nineteen, a lot of blade tags. Yeah. You know, like when you bombing, you start seeing all these famous people bombing, and me and a couple of friend of mine. That wanted to do graffiti, they did graffiti with me. But when I took them to the tunnel, I said, "Come on, you ready to go in the tunnel?" Where? <laughs> I said, "In there." I said, "It's kind of dark in there, isn't it?" I said, "Yeah, it's dark." <laughs> said, about the rats? Said, yeah, they you. They yeah, sometimes they they, they, they they go around, but said, don't worry about it. There's there's other people in there. I said, "Yeah, there'll be sometimes there other people, you know, but don't worry about it. Let's go." Let's go. <laughs> Nah, man, I don't feel like writing. You know, I write a street bond that go in the tunnel with you. Like, ah, oh, you for real? <laughs> so, not a lot of people like that. I that I wrote with was. Like, you really had to go like and have like not be scared. Even when you did the layup, yeah, you had to walk the wooden platform. You're sure, and sometimes the wood would be. Well, <laughs> and you could hear it. <laughs> and you know, like, oh shit! And you and you up like in the third floor, second floor. You might fall. Yeah, fourth. yeah, yeah. So now everybody would like to go on, also on the platform to do layup. Yeah. Like, they better get close. Oh, my body is right here. Or to jump into the track, they'll be scared. They'll be like, I'm about the third rail. <laughs> I said, no way about the third rail. It's right there. As long as you don't touch it, yeah. you're good. Yeah. No, no, I buy breaks. So there was always an excuse. So now sure. everybody that I wrote with, you know, would. Go with me fully, and then after that, you know, we started like, you know, painting these walls and the streets, and you know, you had to be extra careful what you painted yeah. because um, we painted a wall, like we started painting memorial walls. Sure. People that passed away. Sure. And these memorial walls was like, you know, like, it was like to honor or to like, you know, like. To represent like their friends or family that passed away, and yeah. then it's like to remote like you know the person that just died. Yeah. Yes. And I remember, I remember painting these walls. You know, we painted these walls, memorial walls. And after I painted like a like about twelve memorial walls, um, I, it started messing with my head. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Yo, this is deep. Yeah. You know, these people. Are, my like my own people, they just dying. Yeah. You know, we're doing, you know, babies that passed away. You know, from an accident. Yeah. We painted this lady. She hit her head on the escalator, yeah. and she died. You know, old people. You know, died natural causes, and then you had like you know like, you know, some of them were murdered. Street you violence. know, yeah. street violence, and um, you had um, you know, one guy that. He was messing around with his girlfriend, you know, messing around. He had a new girlfriend, but yeah. the old boyfriend came back and killed him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, so it was like, you know, it was kind of like, like not, this is like in the 90s, you know, people were just gunshot everywhere, the drugs. This is before Giuliani. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was so bad in the street, and, and everybody wanted a memorial wall. Yeah. Everybody, like, you know, and this block... Saying they used to tell us, Oh, you see that memorial wall you did? It looks nice. Yeah. We want our ours to look better. <laughs> for my boy. Yeah, for you know what I'm saying? For my boy that sure, passed sure, away. Sure, sure, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. then we were going to Mahan doing memorial. We were going to Brooklyn, we went to Jersey, we were going wow. everywhere painting, but it always was the same thing, you know, they it was like death. Tragedy. And you know, like you know, I, I'm a graffiti artist, I paint graffiti, you know, yeah. now I'm painting faces. For these people that died, yeah. and it was like, we were saying to my, I say to myself, I can't handle this no more. I'm hearing the news. I'm doing memorial war. You know, people just dying left to right, and I'm like, I told by a nicer, yo, I can't take this no more. I can't draw this. Yeah. Like you know, I'm painting the face, 
and they come up to behind me and they're talking to me. Yeah. And I look, they're not talking to me. They're talking, they're talking to, to the, mural, huh? the the mural that I'm painting on the wall. Wow. You know, so you guys was, became world famous for that. Right, so then the media was not good for us either. Oh, the media good? was um saying oh, these guys are painting memorial wall for you know, of and course. for drug dealers. All that crap. Oh, for for okay. gangsters, for people, you know, <laughs> you know, just... they and then the the city went and started buffing all these walls. They went in the nineties, they went like at the late nineties they started taking mm. down all these walls that we painted. You know, this is not too good, you know. And you know and I, I know the person that came. It was a lady that came through and I kept looking at her, I said, You're a cop, right? She said, No, I'm not a cop, I just, you know, wanna know about these walls. Like the 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 way she was talking to me and then after she left, all these walls were taken down and a lot of these walls were taken down through having like programs with kids uh, okay and then they will have kids come over with buckets of paint and oh we clean up our neighborhood of course yeah, and yeah, they will yeah, they yeah, will yeah, buff yeah. The they will buff these walls like like memorial now, walls, yeah. you know and then they have police present in case something jump off. but jump off but that's how it was it was taken down like we had like at least 50 memorial walls and, wow. and, and i think only like a few survived you know, That's insane. Wow. So c can you talk a little bit about, you know, Taz, Taz crew becoming a small business in, in, in the midst of all this difficulty, right? Because, you, you know, you guys are working with corporations, and that takes some savvy right. to kind of do that. You got to go through agencies and stuff, just contracts, you know, that kind of thing. So how, can, how, how does the Taz crew become this, this business with their art? Yeah, okay. Before we transition into all this, you know, like, remember, we was hardcore graffiti artists. Yeah, yeah. Now we going into the business. So, I remember we we got our first contract. You know, we haven't, we haven't established ourselves as a business. We're we working with each other, me, nice and by, working with yeah. each other. We got a contract. And now we go to a hardware store. And the hardware store, we're like, hey, what's up? And the guy's name was Marty. Hey, you know, Marty, what's up, man? You know, we're going to buy some paint. And he became good friend to, with us. And he would give us the key where all the spray paint is at. Uh. So we would open up and you see all the spray can. And we, us three is looking at each other like, we could steal some of this paint. And then we said, no, if we're going to start a business, we shouldn't be stealing. We should be really like we have a budget for money. Yeah. To buy paint. Let's buy paint. Yeah. And that's how we did. You know, we we went in there and forgot. But again, you know, all that. Sure. I, I could take at least 10, yeah, 12 yeah, okay. cans. Yeah, 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 I could yeah. rock, but yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then the day wasn't you know, and the guy wasn't even looking. Yeah. There's no camera during that time. Yeah. So we like no, let's make it, let's let's keep it you know, legit. To the sense that we we are businessmen now. Now we, so it was kind of hard. Yeah. Even yeah, even yeah. when we went to go look for walls, to do these um, to do this stuff, you know, um, we will go and talk to the landlord and say, look, we're gonna do a graffiti mural. To... No, I don't want it. And we go back and say, we're gonna do like a mural, you know, a graffiti mural here. Oh, I don't want it. Yeah. And then I said, damn, what's going on? Maybe I have to stop saying graffiti oh. and say art. An art oh. Are we going to do a mural, an art mural here? Oh, okay, well, yeah, we're going to do an art mural. <laughs> and then yeah. that's how they kind of open up. So, wow. So, yeah. and it, because, and again, the media was also saying, Graffiti's not good yeah. in the '90s. And, yeah, you be careful. And they're because, the ones who gave the name graffiti to it, to right? Begin with, in the you beginning, know? with in, you know, in the sense, same thing like the word hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we really writers, you know, the, but you know, we know that story. So, but so it was kind of hard for us, yeah. you know. So we started like you know finding ways and how to really talk. Be like, okay, look, we're gonna go into your. We want to paint your wall. Your wall's already vandalized. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I don't want it. Oh, no, just send me out. Maybe I could paint the wall for you for free. Yeah. Do a mural 
because here it's a grocery store. Yeah. We could do something with Coca Cola. Yeah. And I could give you some money. Some money. Oh, oh you're going to give me some money. I said, yeah, you know, I, I have in the budget 300. Yeah. We paint the wall. Yeah. And you know, I, I just need an okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, paint my wall. Paint, paint my wall. any wall. You're going to paint now? No, no, no. When I come back, I got to mm-hmm. I gotta let my client know that yeah. we're going to paint this wall and, okay. I, and then it's okay. Yeah. And I will come back a week later. Look, here's a 300. Yeah. And then, and then from there, you know, at least the wall has to stay up at least a little bit, you know, yeah. at least uh, after two months, three months. Yeah. So they started working, and we like, and then one we had one wall that got that got crossed, that got buffed by the owner yeah. a, a month later, and I said, oh, I thought you were gonna leave it up. No, it's a month. Yeah. I only keep it up a month. Then we made a contract that you know, like here, sign here, I'll give you this money. Yeah. Um, just say that uh, the wall gonna stay up for two or three months. Yeah. And then we started doing that. And then though, so we started mostly the the street movement, that people now could paint the street sure. and the wall last. But back then, no mural would last. Yeah. You know, we started that movement that, you know, you allow, you know, to go over a wall that has, again, graffiti on it. You could go over it without the the actual graffiti on it come back to cross you out. If it, yeah. if it do that, it's, it's it's a no no. You don't do that. Yeah. You yeah. know. So we started like that's how when we started giving out these walls to other writers, they started spreading out the news that you know this is the way it should be, and everybody should be happy with it. It's not like we going against you. Yeah. You know, physically, like we it's not the personal. It's all business. Yeah. And so that's how we started doing these walls, and getting permission. You know, like it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was hard for us. We was not making no money. Sure, sure. We were broke in the early nineties, mm. really broke. Yeah. You know, there was like, you know, six months that we didn't even get a job. Wow. My wow. wife was telling me, "You better work at McDonald's." Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to McDonald's. Yeah. Go to White. I don't care. Yeah. Get a job. Be like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get a job. Because I, <laughs> I left my job already. Yeah, sure, you know sure. What I'm I left my job in the nineties. And and how I left that job was because I was an engineer for a company called Acme Steel Door in Brooklyn. And my supervisor was like, because I used to paint walls, like go to my job. Yeah. And then meet up with the guys like around 8 o'clock at night and yeah. paint until we finish. Sometimes we finish at 3, sometimes we finish at 5 in the morning. Wow. Or 6 in the morning, I would go home, jump in the shower, drink a lot of coffee, and go to work. Oh, okay. And then get to work, and I'll be sleeping in my, in my desk. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I remember yeah, my yeah. boss, my supervisor came up to me. She said, you have a choice. You could leave here or leave the other job. You can't be sleeping here. Yeah, yeah. And that, that rang a bell, like, oh. Okay, that's a choice that I wasn't thinking about. I'm yeah. thinking about working, making money, and then this will be also making money. So I'm sure. making money Choo-choo both ways, ways. Yeah. and yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah. And, but uh, it wasn't like that. So when yeah. we, we started landing all these jobs, I said, okay, it's time to leave. Yeah. You know, so I saved up enough money that I said, I'm going to leave my job and never look back. Yeah. So I left it and never looked back. Wow. But when that money ran out, there was no more money, we was like, are we gonna do? Yeah, mm. there's yeah, no yeah, more yeah. money in the street. There's, you know, you know, it's kind of hard, you know. And then we landed another company called Crooked Eye. They were like a like a bill distributor. They they had like a like a juice called Crooked Eye, almost like a drink, alcohol. So we started doing that, and then we started doing like other small jobs in there, doing mom and pop stores. We did She Was Regal, mm. you know, and during that time. We did ABC Carpet at Home. Okay, yeah, mm. yeah. Right. So, so um, how we started the company, TATS, I mean, the the adding the S to the tax crew. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we met we met Fat Joe um, the time that we was also doing a, a music video for Karis One. Oh, okay, okay, sure, Called sure, sure. Man Lion. The line, Man Lion was the, was the singer. Uh, he was doing a song. And we was actually painting in a place called the Bronx Hall of Fame. It was located on 169th Street and 3rd Avenue behind the school. And so Karis knew about the school. Yeah. 
and it was like a perfect place because it was like kind of like a, a backyard to like a big wall uh, away from the school and and we we've been painting there for like a year or two so we took care of this one that would be a good place to do the video for man lion and now we're painting the man lion video we did like a big lion and who came along you know fat joe you know fat joe came and he's like yo what's up guys i love you guys tax crew <laughs> i love you like you know i love you guys you guys are like my idols Hi. you know i love you guys and he also was a graffiti artist uh, he, uh, he was a graffiti artist and he okay. wrote crack okay. and you know so next thing you know him brim went on a mission and became all city like they were going all over the place doing doing brim crack crack brim you know yeah. like all over the place and and when joe was ready to drop his album you know he came up to us and he said look guys i want to do snipes and snipes are like you know just you know you come up with like a poster and you go through the neighborhood and you put it up like you know like a like a new movie's coming out yeah. coming soon yeah, yeah yeah so we went and we did a lot of I got a Flo Joe, you know, uh, posters all over. So we like, meet, we like meet we, up. Like we pasted. We pasted and we met up with Fat Joe, um, like about eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. Didn't go out to like one o'clock. So we hit all the major fashion places, like stores. Like we, we will go to Fordham Row. Sure. We went to Third Avenue. Yeah. And we hit Southern Boulevard. Yeah. And then we go to 125th Street. From 120th Street, we go to like the Times Square, the Village. And then from the very, we go up to Queens, to the Queens, the Queens Mall, Nolan Boulevard, wow. uh, Queens Boulevard, you know. And then from there, we go to Brooklyn, we go to the Bushwick section, we go to Coney Island. And we would snipe up every, every day for, for like a whole month, you know. One time, Joe was like, yo, it's like six in the morning. And Joe said, yo, we gotta go, we gotta go over here. And we like, yo. And I seen me and Bio was like, we was looking at each other like, yo, Bio, I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, we gotta get, we gotta get the fuck out of here. And Joe got us kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? So me, me and Bio say, yo, Joe, man, can you pull over real quick? We gotta take a leak. So when he pulled over, me and Bio started running. And Joe knew already that we was out. We wasn't coming back. So you see the van taking out. You know, we like, you got to get the fuck out of here. You know, we, you know we, we been here with you for hours and hours. But we loved it, you know. And that campaign was so successful when, when Big Pun came along. You know, we was doing the same thing for Big Pun. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we destroyed Big Pun. I think Joe got a different team. And pun was everywhere. People want to know, you know, like the way the way he was doing it is like, you know, like street bombing as a graffiti artist. Yeah. So when you're a graffiti artist, you know, you bomb anywhere. Yeah. You know, we're doing side of the highway. Yeah. We're doing everywhere, and then at the same time, you know, me by a nice is, is, is doing work with Coca Cola. We're doing work for everybody, and you know, so we we tagging ourselves. You putting up T A T S, you know what I'm saying? Like, what happened is instead of doing T A T and T S separate, yeah. So we took the last T and just added an S. Yeah. You know, we've been doing that from from the beginning. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, when T K had his crew T M B, we put T A T N B. Mm. So that means T A T T M B. You know, you had T uh, T O A, uh, T C A. We had a whole bunch of you know with the T A T, but we added if your First letter of your crew started with a T. We just connected it yeah. like that. So that's how the TS started from the TATS. You know, we also part of Task Crew, Terror Squad. Yeah. And so we just kept going it, kept doing that. You know, uh, we painted. You know, when Pun passed away, you know, we had we had that particular wall that we painted. And yeah. Me, Bio. Nicer and me, we had a, a nice wall that we painted. You know, Bio did a a a, a, B, a bio burner. Nicer 
did a character with a bulletproof, bullet, um, bulletproof vest with a Puerto Rican bandana, and and then he's holding up two guns and he's shooting, and yeah. then there's a BG183. And I remember when Pun, when Pun was um, coming out with his album, you know, he his promotional photograph was him in front of that particular piece that, you know, that he's doing the same thing, the same movement. Yeah. And that was the photo that he was, you know, promoting himself to the, you know, to the world. So when he died, we say, oh, let's do that war. And yeah. that's how that, that area, the pun at Rogers Place became the big pun war. Wow. You know, we also painted in Casita Maria. Again, I was born and raised across the street from Casita Maria. You know, Casino Maria reached out to us to paint the Three Hermanas. And the Three Hermanas is um, actually um, Joe Consul grandmother. Yeah. That we also painted another wall for his grandmother on Prospect. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that, that got, you know, got taken down, but the actual print is inside the facility. So we painted a lot of... Stuff you know, we painted. I love the Bronx mural. Yeah, that's located on Simpson. Again, Simpson is where I grew up at. Yeah, and that's how we got the wall. Yeah, you know, so a lot of these walls because you know of my neighborhood. You know, Bayer was born. Um, Bayer was raised up in Bronx River Project. Okay, sure. And that's sure. how I got to go cut to meet Bambada uh, because of because of Bayer. But Bayer lived in Bronx River. You know. So we did a lot. Of, I did a lot of stuff in Bronx River, um, but it was you know a great time. Like it's a lot of, well, a lot of stuff that we did that's still out there that you still could see, you know. But and after that, um, and the company is just we just you know taking the company in a way that not only that we do murals, we also do vinyl, we do contract you know for other stuff that we do you know. We do lectures, you know. We and you done, got a show going on right now too, right? right? I did a show at um at Warworks too, you know. The place is called Crete Hub, and you know, um, I, I asked a crash to do. I wanted to do a show there in 2020, thinking that I could do a show in the next couple of months. He said, "Yeah, let me look at my calendar." And he said, okay, on 2022 of February. I said, wow, that's like two years from now. I said, <laughs> I said all right, you know, let's, let's get it, let's get it. So, yeah. but, but it did give me more time to produce some really great paintings. You know, I actually dedicated a, a painting there for Big Pun. Yeah, I saw that. But that yeah, same, yeah. That's, this is the month that he passed away. He passed away February 7th. Yeah. So it was perfect to have that particular piece in there for people to see and enjoy. Uh, I also did like a self portrait of myself. Yeah. Join and and I also do like a hydrant. That's like my signature that I've been doing for the last five years. Yeah. I also you know found these two hydrant pieces that I was laying on the floor and then I was like and it was kept telling me why well, you don't put it in your show <laughs> and, I, and I kept saying to myself I don't know what to do with it. Like, I don't know, like, how can I create something with this? So, you know, in the end, after like a week and a half before the show, I came up with the idea, and and that's what I came up with. I think it was a really great idea with how I did it. And this is a, a, a show that, that you know, again, I just wanted to show people, uh, like my fans, my family, that I really love art, and this is something that I was, like, born, you know, God gave me a gift. That um that I'm still using it and you know and doing a lot of positive things with it you know absolutely and and in the end you know I'm I'm proud of the show because you know again we got the COVID yeah and and it was amazing that I had at least 250 to 300 people showing up on that show like yeah. you know there was people calling me like yo I can't find parking. Yeah, and it was like you know, for me it was like incredible that that people still, you know, like the stuff that I do, I have a lot of support and a lot of you know people that still love what I do. So um, I actually have like two more upcoming shows, and I think it's like more like a pop up that sure. I'm doing, 
And I think a lot of people are also reaching out to me, like, you know, they want work to be done on canvases. And yeah. I think, you know, because in the beginning, you know, we was mostly, you know, street artists that was doing street art advertising or street art mural. But a lot of people don't know that I also paint canvas. And now, after this one show, you know, uh, people are reaching out to me. And if you have guys had any more questions? Or... Uh, just uh, the last couple of questions would be um, talk a little bit about you know, the Muriel Kings and, and how do you feel about this whole Muriel movement around the world and you being a, a part of that? Because you traveled the world and you guys are maybe uh, an inspiration to this whole Muriel mo movement. Now mm -hmm. it's way more than tagging. It's, right. it's, a, it's a whole global movement. Muriel. So, how do you feel about uh, the name Muriel Kings that you're, you're, you're coined way back, and then this whole global movement of of, of Muriel being made by artists all over the okay. world? Um, okay. So, you know, when you when I started doing the graph, you know, you had like um, artists like Lee. Lee was doing incredible mural back then in the '80s. You know, he did like yeah. uh, he did one that was in the train station that that you know that was like my internet mm -hmm. you know back then you know the way you saw murals is you had to travel yeah by yeah. train like so lee had one that was from from i think from 34th street to 14th street there's an abandoned um four or five train station i think it's on 27th mm -hmm. street that's abandoned yeah so he so when you, when you when the train is going slow, you could see the bandit, and he had this mural that he painted this Egyptian guy on a camel. Wow! It was a silhouette. Yeah. So he did like um, yellow and orange sky, and he did like some beige into browns for the sand, and on the tip of the on the mountain of the sand, he did like a camel with an Egyptian like silhouette, yeah. and then he drew this. Like the like the shadow of the camel, the silhouette, and it was so amazing. Like wow, yeah. I didn't know you could do that with spray paint. Like you could do art, like you know, like people was doing art. Like you had like the hand of doom sure. was seen, you know. And then Lee did another one that with uh, I think it was um the two thousand and one mural that he did with a lion, and that that was so. <clears throat> That was so crazy. And then Lee did another painting that I saw on the train. And then you had seen doing top to bottom with colors. Yeah. So, you know, this inspired me to like, wow, it's more than, than you know, than a piece on the train. It's like, it's a whole production that you could do. Absolutely. So that, that brought me to the thing. And then in the early 90s, we was traveling a little bit around the world, you know, we yeah. traveled to France and we met a crew called Mac Crew, MNC mm. Crew. And they were like one of the best crew out there. They were doing like top to bottom crew. And so we needed to change our name from yeah. TAT. So I came up with the idea, let's do, you know, I'm gonna call myself the Mural King. Yeah. Because mm. you know, at that time we were painting so much mural, we like, yo, we call ourselves the Mural King. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. then we took it and we we did it for our company name. Oh, let's do the Mural King as the mm. company. And when we started traveling, you know, these people was doing like side of buildings, incredibly like doing like style, like you know, like doing characters, like doing like yeah. some stuff that it was amazing. And you know, I don't know, you know, it could have been from the from the subway art book, you know, that inspired everybody to do this graffiti. Yeah. Could have been like, again, you had, the only way you saw graffiti was through graffiti, graffiti magazine. Sure, sure, sure. They had yeah, a lot yeah. of graffiti magazine that was out there. And because of this graffiti magazine, you know, and again, there was getting done here. There was like a, like one or two uh, magazine in, uh, in New York City, but a lot of the magazine was coming from overseas. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so they was also producing, so they took something that somebody started back here, you know, say Tacky 183, sure. and you had like the 
the phase two, we had the Coco 144, the snakes. I was writing, but it just took off, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people used to interview me and say, you know, what you want graffiti to be at. And yeah, I said, yeah. I want graffiti to be on a plane, yeah. on the side of a boat. You know? <gasps> but now it's there already. You know, yeah. people painted plane, helicopters, and some movie backdrop. You see a lot of music videos. Yeah. And it's all over, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a non-stop, you know, we actually did total of like 29 music videos that wow. we have out there wow. that we did, you know, from the early 80s, you know, like, so when people ask us, you know, how long you've do, been doing business, we've been doing business since the, when we first started. Sure, sure, sure. You know, it's not like, you know, Absolutely. we started in the 90s. Yeah, we officially went and got it like a, uh, copyright, like yeah, Task Crew is now a company, but yeah. we've been doing this from from early early eighties yeah. when we first started, and and today you know Bio is you know he's doing his heart, you know he's all over with the hard nicers, you know getting busy doing his characters and doing paintings like it's incredible, yeah, and, and myself you know I, I, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, and then I think when us three get together. You know, it's amazing work. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely, yeah. you know, even even the new school writers, they they show so much love. They're like, yeah. you know, and I looking at their work, they're like, wow, you guys are way better than others. Like, no, 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 you guys are the gods. You know, and, and I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, you know, like, like I I see myself like I'm not doing the type of work you're doing, but they they looking at me like, you know, you you so good at it, and because. Not only that we do, like a lot of a lot of writers, they only it's only a few writers that, that specialize in everything. Like there's yeah, only yeah. there's a couple of writers that I just do characters. Yeah. And they can't do letters. Sure, sure. And there's a lot of people that do cat that do letters but they can't do characters. Yeah. And a lot of people that do characters and letters but they don't they don't have a hand style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people yeah. it's it's real different now. It's yeah. real different. It's a different movement. And I feel like, you know, whatever you have, whatever you have to give, it's the best. You know, like, it's not like you have to stop. You know, you just continue doing what you're doing. You know, like, uh, I know we started traveling around the world. And, like, we went to Mexico. And in Mexico, you know, the different, the different art in Mexico where they, you know, again, the paint over there is like, like three times as much over there. You know, because you, know, you take... The Mexican money and our money is like about like nine time, eight time. So over there, you know, for them to get colors, you know, like this is like late nineties. So they take one color, like a like a like a light yellow, and they take a, an orange, and they put a they put like two different type of cap <laughs> on, on the on the spray can, and they put a straw between these two cans. So if this can is kind of empty, they spray this side and they put a color that runs from one can to the next can to mix a color. Wow. In Mexico. In Mexico. We're like, oh, That's wow, this is, this is like, you know, like you over there and, and you're seeing this happening. You're like, wow, this is incredible. Like, you know, like I would never guess, you know, to add two colors together. So they figured out. So everywhere you go, it's always something new. Yeah. You know, like. And again, in Mexico, we, we noticed that there was a lot of, like, the percentage of the women was a lot of women graffiti artists. We're like, wow, this is incredible. Like, like in New York, you see them, but it's not so many. Sure. But sure. in Mexico, it was like about 40% of the women was graffiti artists and, and 60% were men. I'm like, oh, wow, this is, this is really awesome. So to this day, you know, what I've been doing is just been drawing. Uh, almost every day, you know, um, I took a trip to Brazil, and I remember this was like like 2015 or 13. I went to Brazil, and during that time, you know, like I'm painting murals for everybody from McDonald's to movies that's coming out brand new. I'm doing doing T-Mobile, doing AT&T, we're doing stuff for everybody, but it was like I'm doing something for someone. It yeah. was not I was doing something for myself. So it became a job. Yeah. And like, you know, it kind of, kind of 
became kind of boring to me. Like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm painting this. So yeah, use this color red. Use this color blue. So it was like something that we had to do, you know, for us to get paid. It was all right, but it was nothing like I felt was like was for me. So when I took a trip to Brazil, it changed my life. I'm seeing these artists that are painting out of raw material, like, you know, they're using brushes. They're taking a wall, you know, here in New York, we paint the whole wall one color. Yeah. There, they just paint whatever image they want to throw on the wall. So if it's a person's face or with a body, they're just doing a round circle in the body, and that's it. The, the rest is just raw brick, raw cement. Yeah. So when I went there, I painted with like close to like 50 artists and I'm seeing every artist, you know, like kind of like struggling, like, you know, because again, paint costs so much money Yeah. and they're making something out of nothing. And it brought me back to how I started. Mm. And so when I left Brazil, I was a new artist. Like, wow, this like opened up my eyes and saying like, you know, don't take this for granted because, yeah. because you're good of what you're doing. You know, there's, there's always something that you always got to give that any Same thing like a boxer. Yeah. You know, after a while, you box and you're winning, it gets boring. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, you always got to keep that, that heat, that energy in your body, keep going. So in this, in this solo show, this is what I did. Like, I gave it, I gave it my all. I, I, I didn't take nothing for granted. I said, look, you know, people want to see more. I have to give them more. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what I've been doing. Absolutely. I, I got I got one final question for you, which is, what does the Bronx represent to you? Mm, uh, for me, the Bronx represent everything. It represent life, represent me yeah. as a person, because without me living in the Bronx, you know, it showed me different elements of, of life, from being poor, from being broke, from seeing everything that was like, when people say, you live in the Bronx? Where? In the South Bronx? You know, and for me, it was like life, you know, like, you know, we had the hydrant, we had sports, we had street games, we had everything that, that, you know, only in like, in poor neighborhood would have, and, and we, and we did, you know, you know, we had, we had the crime rate, you know, you had to protect yourself, you had, you know, your friends that, was doing so much crime, or you had your friend that passed away too early in the yeah, game yeah, yeah. that you didn't want to hear about that. And, you know, you had everything that, you know, like, you know, like Carol once, once said, you know, you, the Bronx keep creating it. And Absolutely. that's what, you know, we've been doing for many years. You know, we create something out of nothing. Yeah. And that's what the Bronx represent, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you are born and raised here, somehow you talented and somehow and somewhere in, in your life, you know, yeah. you know, like, if you want to be a dancer, you know, you go knocking your next door neighbor and he's a dancer. You know, yeah. you want to be a DJ, you go upstairs and you, you know, yeah. DJ, you want to, you know, do graffiti, you know, the wall right across the street has graffiti. So yeah. everything that you want is here, you know, if you're hungry, go to the nearest grocery store. You know, you want to go shopping, it's right there. You want to take the subway, the buses, everything is so close, you know. Like, you know, it's nothing that the Bronx has everything, you know. Yeah. Like, we got, yeah. the, we got the museums, we have we have the best team in the world, New York Yankees. You know what I'm saying? You can't go wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? I support New York Yankees since the early 77 when they won... You know, back then, you know, and the blackout, we had blackouts, we have, you know, everybody is family, they, you know, we as a, as a Bronx family, we protect each other. Yeah. You know, like if you have your, your son and your daughter, you know, the next door neighbor is looking out for your kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people say that, you know, you got to be careful, but here, I feel it's the safest place because, you know, mothers, when they see something going on, they out there, you know, like, yo, you better be careful with my kids. That's yeah, for my yeah, kids, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we have it all, you know what I'm saying? We have everything, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, 
from the board president, you know, Ruben Diaz, you know, he really went and he did what he had to do. Uh, you have all these people that come down, you know, like the Bronx is, you know, is where it's at, you know, like, yeah. you know, hip hop wouldn't start it because of the Bronx. Um, graffiti wouldn't be here because yeah. it was, you know, for the Bronx. So, you know, we we, we make even from break dancing to MC, you know, all the Latin hustle, salsa, my, my <laughs> hustle, the salsa, you know, everything is all in the Bronx, you know, like you hear, like when I travel the world and I say I'm from the Bronx, you know, people will stop and ask me like a hundred questions. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is that's you know you got the fashion that start that started in the Bronx. You got everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what can I say? You know, I'm glad. Again, I'm here. I'm glad that I ran with my crew, task crew. Um, man, shout out to my wife, my kids. You know, the whole family. You know, the crash, the days, um, the lady pinks, the Lee, Mitch seventy seven. One guy that I used to go and see one of his walls that he had by Yankee Stadium on the wall that he had a Mitch 77 that was like my internet yeah. you know um, you know Bambada in the early 80s uh, all the DJs that, that that was out there Grandmaster Flash uh, Grand you know Melly Mel yeah. Grandmaster Cass you know these guys are still current in the game yeah. Grand Wizard Theodore yeah. you know these guys are still making you know, making hip hop, making the Bronx what it is today. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, thank you so much for sharing everything that you've shared today. And um, I think we'll uh, we'll end, Kurt. With thank the... you, Ari. Thing we the last thing we ask every artist is to do a tag for us that stays in the museum library. Oh, great! So I have, have a marker. A... I have a marker. It's not a dry marker, right? It's, uh, no, no, no. Oh, it's, a, oh, it's a dry mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a dry mark. <laughs> okay. So, for a dry marker, a you hit it down like this, and the ink should come down. Oh, all right. That's how you get blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, see? It's already dripping. Thank you, BG.